It's 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You know what that means. It's time for Saturday Morning Serials. And as always, I'm your host, Paul. Um, I was going to try to come up with some wacky name. Um, but, I don't know. That's, that was going to be my host name. I was, I, this, really, my real name's Paul. It's not a shoot name or a stage name. It's just Paul. Uh... Okay, guys, this is episode 46, and like I said before, I'm planning on something cool on episode 52, that's a full year, and I know you guys have talked about it, I talked about it last week, so remember, keep telling me what you guys want, I'm still looking at that full Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon block, uh, but that's a lot, that's, that's eight hours, that's going to take me like two days to upload, so yeah. Just letting you know. So, okay, as always, Saturday Morning Serials is brought to you by RU Game, the best comic book collectible all around Geek Shop, located at 124 North Sunset Drive, Pickle, Ohio, 45356. Um, and the Group Therapy TV podcast. We interview the best in horror movies, uh, horror hosts, uh, wrestling, comic books. Artists, writers, directors, actors, actresses. Uh, you know, go back, go back, go back a few, about a month or so ago. I had Ken Gerhard. That's right. From the History Channel. I got to interview him. Really cool cat. Really liked that interview. Um, I got some really cool interviews coming up that I'm going to hopefully shoot this weekend. And, uh, yeah. So, you guys need to check it out. I think you guys will have fun. All right, I really mixed this week up big time. Um, I keep bringing some ones back because everybody seems to like them. Uh, I brought back some stuff we had aired before that I haven't aired for a while. Uh, brought two new ones. Hopefully, they'll be here at the end. So uh, if the YouTube bots, I can just cut them off and then we can still have a full episode without it being weird in the middle. All right, here we go. Uh, we're getting close to the end. So probably next week, I'm going to air the final episodes of both this show and another show. So this is RoboCop. This is episode 12. So we're on episode 12 of RoboCop. We're on episode 12 of Inhumanoids. Uh, maybe I'll get uh, Dino Riders caught up so we can just air all three last episodes at the same time. If you want me to do that, let me know. Uh, if not, maybe you want Inhumanoids next week. You want Robocop the week after. You want Dino Riders the couple weeks after that. Let me know. But this is Robocop episode 12. And this is Menace of the Mind. Man, that's one thing I always thought was funny. They love putting these goofy intros to some of these cartoons, man. Like the, the title card. But the cool thing about Robocop is, is that uh, we still got a whole other animated series after this. That hopefully I can air. So here you guys go. This is Robocop. Enjoy. Detroit. The near future. Officer Alex J. Murphy and his partner Ann Lewis fight to rid the decaying city of the criminal element which infests it. After being mortally wounded in the line of duty, Officer Murphy is outfitted by OCP with bulletproof titanium robotic parts and with computer-enhanced motor and sensory capabilities. He has become the ultimate super cop. Robocop. Another victim of the so-called zip-chip collars was reported today in a suburb of old Detroit. Jimmy Collins, age 12, was found unconscious in his bedroom by his parents. It appeared that his mind had been totally burnt out from wearing a zip-chip collar. His parents said they bought the collar three weeks ago to help Jimmy catch up with his schoolwork. 
No one had informed them of the danger these collars present to those who wear them. The zip chip collar is being produced and distributed illegally in the city. Thus far, the police have been unable to trace their source nor to discourage people from purchasing them. The collar reportedly speeds up the synapses of the brain, allowing the mind to function as efficiently as a computer. Despite the dangers involved, this makes the collar attractive to many business people and school students who feel they need this competitive edge. Psst, hey dudes, ever seen one of these? With these, you can ace the finals and still have time to party. Oh, I gotta have one. It's my only hope for passing. A key component of the collar is a bio-microchip manufactured by Omni Consumer Products, or OCP. As you can see from this taped interview, the president of OCP denies having any official connection with the collars. Sir, isn't it true that these so-called zip chips are manufactured by OCP Industries? No comment. And isn't it true that OCP refuses to stop producing these microchips because to do so would cut into their revenues in aerospace and other profitable divisions? No comment. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Irrefutable proof that the OCP puts profits over people. What's going on? I thought the police were going to handle this matter. We're working on it, sir. Well, work harder. Our microchips. They have a lot of legitimate uses, but this unauthorized use is threatening OCP's reputation as a benevolent corporation. As a what? I mean, we've received a tip, sir. We're going to be moving against them tonight. You just better stop them, because if you don't, OCP will. Team number three, what's the status? How about it, Murphy? Do you see anything? No sign of any unauthorized vessel that could be the bio-microchip thieves. Negative, Sergeant Reed. Wait. Aerial craft rapidly approaching at Mach 5 speed. Mach 5? I don't see anything. That's ah, probably just a smudge on his visor. Whoa! Look out! Oh, look! A welcoming committee. This should be fun. All units, return fire! <laughs> Do your worst, Scars Fuzz. What's that thing made of? Now it's my turn. a little low today. We really took a beating down at the dock. Many of your fellow officers are still in the hospital recuperating. Uh, sir, what's the word on RoboCop? Is he... We don't know yet, son. Dr. Tyler is still trying to determine if he's salvageable. The chairman of OCP is here to tell us about a new OCP undertaking designed to assist us against this new threat in RoboCop's absence. <clears throat> Thank you, Sergeant Reed. Gentlemen, as you know, those bio-microchip thieves represent a great menace to society. Their insidious perversion of OCP's bio-microchips is destroying the minds of thousands of innocent victims every day. And with their new super-powered aircraft, they far outgun our current police forces. But this is a battle we cannot afford to lose, and we won't lose. Because starting today, the Detroit police will have their own ultra-weapons. Ultra weapon number one, Ace Jackson, former Green Beret, the world's greatest munitions expert. Ultra weapon number two, Ace Jackson, 
Ultra Weapon number two. Wheels Wilson, straight from the Motor City Speedway, and as you can see, is also very proficient with a bazooka. Pretty impressive. And finally, Ultra Weapon number three. Someone who should be an incredible asset in this particular case. Third Man Barnes. He's the leader of our team, with several thousand hours of combat flight experience. Each man and his machine is equipped with complete surface armor. Mark my words, this is an assault team that will always get their man. Welcome, gentlemen, your new allies, the Ultra Police. My bad. Hey, at least they're real men. They're not just machines. What is it? What's wrong with him? I don't know. I replaced his damaged arm and circuitry, but he's still not reviving. It's almost like he's in a coma. I bet you don't think I'm a very nice person. I think you're scum. Murphy, what is it? What is going on here? Does it hurt? Fun's over. Murphy! It's okay. It's okay, it's okay Murphy. Murphy. It's me, Lewis. Come out of it. It's gonna be okay. Officer Lewis, I, uh, I have recovered. Uh, thank you for your concern. Murphy, <laughs> you're all right. Yes, but you seem to be in need of a good crisis therapy ward. <laughs> I think he's back to normal. No. Known fugitives are at large. They must be brought to justice immediately. Not till I've run some more tests. No time for tests. Murphy! Wait up! What's the rush? Robocop! Wait! If you're determined to get back to active duty, at least let me help you find those criminals. How can you help? This way. I was hoping to run a few more tests, give it to you in a month or so. But this crisis can't wait. So I present the Robocopter. It's beautiful. Fight fire with nuclear energy, I always say. It does appear to be a formidable craft. Formidable? Why, this is equipped with the most state-of-the-art equipment imaginable. On your left are the controls for the infrared scanners. Next to them... Your details are unnecessary, Dr. Tyler. I will obtain all the information I need by interfacing directly with the copter's on-deck computer. I understand now. Yes, this aircraft will suit my purpose well. Now if you will stand back, there are criminals who must be apprehended. Definitely a superior craft. Okay, Murphy, it's just you and me now. So spill it. What's with you? I am in pursuit of some dangerous criminals. Come on, Murphy, you know what I mean. You seem to be obsessed with capturing these guys. They are fugitives from justice, according to my prime directive. Murphy, I'm your partner. I know you better than that. Does it have something to do with your nightmare in Tyler's lab? When I was hanging onto the supercraft, I saw the face of the criminal. It was Clarence Boddicker. Boddicker? The man who shot you when you were still... Human. That's right, Lewis. It was our first case together. We tracked them to their warehouse hideout. I got the drop on two of them. But the others were waiting. They had already overcome you. I was outmaneuvered and outgunned. The next thing I saw was Tyler. My limbs had been severed. My previous life was over. Forever. No wonder you had a nightmare. Murphy, are you turning this into a personal vendetta? Boddicker is once more terrorizing the innocent. He must be brought to justice. We'll get him, Murphy, and then let the courts administer the punishment he deserves. Right? Be alert, you two. These crooks think like the OCP. Time is money. So I bet they'll be back sooner rather than later. Right. Hey, I owe 
hope it's sooner. I can't wait to show the old man that we can out-police Robocop. <laughs> now don't get too cocky, Wheels. We're gonna do this by the numbers. Ah, you worry too much. There it is. Hold your positions. I'm on my way. Copy, Birdman leader. Copy that, but no dice. <laughs> oh, this sucker's moving too fast. Wilson, hold off till I get there. That's an order. Wilson! <laughs> Come to me, you little beauties. <laughs> Time to show this knack when he's up again. Wilson! <laughs> Thanks, Birdman. No problem. Next time, obey orders. Ace, see if you can knock them down before they're gone. I'm ahead of you. Looks like the Nat has a big brother. Let's get out of here. Nah, this is too much fun. Eat Sidewinder, tough guy. <laughs> too easy. We're invincible. Invincible! Okay, Flyboy, time for you to take some of your own medicine. <laughs> Started to get annoyed! That thing can maneuver! He's circling back! He's coming in too fast! You don't like me very much. Well, you're about to like me a lot less. <laughs>find you here i want to thank you for saving my life i was just doing my duty yeah maybe so but i thought the three of us could fill your shoes boy was i wrong listen if there's anything we can ever do for you you can help me find bodiger
He's operating out of the trumpet center. Boddicker's headquarters is in Delta City, the trumpet center. We copy that, Robo Lady. Last one there's a flat foot. Thanks, partner. Only wish they'd gotten my chopper repaired in time for this. These little bunnies are better than gold. It's a raid! Scratch one rotten assembly line. Over there, it's Boddicker. What is new? That cavalry's arrived. I think I'm a very nice person. Fun's over. Fun's over. Fun's over. No! Please! Fun's over. Murphy, don't! Murphy, you are a cop! No matter what he's done to you, don't let him make you a murderer! You are under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Oh, Murphy, I'm so proud of you. I, I was so afraid that- it Officer Lewis, I am programmed to enforce the law by legal means. I was perfectly in control the entire time. Murphy?
Dracula and Frank and Betty coming your way. How about a monster for breakfast today? Ooh. Frank and Betty has strawberry flavored marshmallows. And Count Jocula has chocolatey marshmallows. Part of this good nutritious breakfast. Something free lurks in Monster Cereal. Will it make you handsome, charming? Specially marked boxes of Monster Cereals know. Inside one of these free wax lips, fangs, or mustaches may just uncover the real you. Rambo! Without water, they'll fry! It's no man in grip. Say goodbye, Turbo. Rambo, the force of freedom! Oh, it's real! Hey, Gripper. Turbo, jump on! I'll use my night vision helmet. Got him in my sights. Look out! Gotcha! Get Turbo, Gripper, and Nomad. Figures and vehicle each sold separately. We're going to read some Doctor Zero. The Shadow Line Saga from Marvel Comics. Stuff that you guys don't remember. I really think Marvel needs to reprint some of this stuff. Like the, uh... I, I'm a sucker for, uh... The new universe stuff, not gonna lie. Love me some Star Brand. Love me some uh, DP7, Psy Force, Spitfire, and the Trouble, Troubleshooters. Or, then it became codenamed Spitfire. Love that stuff. Alright, guys, I hope you liked this episode of Robocop. Uh, I'm gonna show, technically, it's one cartoon, but it's actually two cartoons. Uh, that is, we're doing. Part of the Saturday morning supercade. We're doing a pitfall, Harry, and a Qbert. Because people ask for Qbert. So I'm bringing this to everybody who asked for Qbert out there. None of you asked for pitfall, Harry, because I don't think any of you guys know pitfall, Harry exists. So I know, I know I've know i aired episodes before, but here you guys go. This is pitfall, Harry, and Qbert. I just think it's weird, man. I, I love these early, early uh, cartoon versions of uh, of uh, early cartoon versions of video games when there was like little to no mythos behind the characters. I mean, literally, Pitfall is just the guy running around, jumping across, jumping on the on the alligator's heads. Remember how hard that was on Atari? So here you guys go. This is a twofer. One episode, technically two. This is Pitfall, Raiders of the Lost Shark, and Qbert Noser P.I. Have fun. Enjoy. <laughs> of rare government coins was mysteriously sunk off the Coral Islands. And you suspect someone is after the coins? Yes, your old enemy, the Shark, and his merciless band of modern-day pirates. The Shark? Back in circulation, eh? I look forward to our meeting. We're on our way. Where's Quick Claw? Raring to go, Uncle Pitt! Time for beach games, old buddy. Got a date with a shark. <laughs> shark? Oh, why couldn't it be a minnow, a perch, a guppy? We've got a slight problem called Pitfall Harry, but I'll take care of it. Bum, 
voyage, my pet. Give the shark's regards to Pitfall Harry. <laughs> And the bun? Oh, yeah. Chop it off with a little mustard. Yeah. And voila. A bow cut stricter sandwich. I got him. What is it? I think they got him. I got the thing. Oh, I don't got him. You just threw the joystick out the window! into their wetsuits. We've got to get down to that sunken treasure before the shark does. Quick, Claw. We'll never get to the sunken ship this way. Whoa, 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 what's the rush? According to the Admiral, the ship should be below us. Let's go! 
up and look for his hideout. I sure hope Quick Claw had better luck finding the shark's hideout than we did. I wonder what's keeping our fearless feline. Oh, Pitfall! Rhonda! Help! There he is, Uncle Pitfall! There they are. Get them! Get them all! What treachery! I've been followed! following them. They're doomed anyway. <laughs> it's been a pleasure, Pitfall. on the black market. <laughs> Stall him, old pal, while Rhonda and I put phase two into action. <laughs> Stall him, he says. This better work. Hook, line, and sinker. Do your stuff. <laughs> After they got. Come back! You're not on yet! <laughs> hey, Cubit! Keep your puppy out of here! He's spoiling my performance! Boy! Cubal, you're mad! Yeah! I hope he doesn't do anything stupid! Hey, who turned out the lights? Where am I? Ouch! Hey, what's going on here? Q-Puppy's gone! And so is Q-Ball! Q-Ball! Q-Ball, why are you hiding under there? Who's hiding? No, I'm not hiding! Well, I found Q-Ball, but where's Q-Puppy? Look, there's Q-Puppy's collar! What did you do with him? Yeah, you big meanie! Nothing! I didn't touch him, honest! You did too, you took my dog! Q-Ball, you have 24 hours to bring back you, puppy. And if you don't, you'll be expelled. Mm -hmm. We can't find you, puppy. 
anywhere. I hope he's okay. Well, what about me? If I'm expelled, I'm out of the play. You gotta help me, Cubert. I didn't do it. I wouldn't take your dog, Cubert. You believe me, don't you? Maybe Cubert ran off, like to the mall, to check out some new shipments of designer collars. No, someone's trying to get Cubert expelled. We gotta find Cubert and prove Cubert's innocent. First, we gotta figure out who's setting you up. Got any suspects in mind? Well, my director, Q. Lu, isn't thrilled with me playing the Tin Man. And Q. Bob would love me thrown out of school so he could take over my role. And then there's Q. Sue. She thinks I'm a big jerk. We gotta find out which one of them took Q. Puppy. And we'll start with Q. Lu. He works at his dad's warehouse. Maybe he stashed Q. Puppy there. Those jerks are trying to follow up my plan. I'll stop them. Be quiet. We gotta sneak in and find the puppy before anyone knows we're here. First, we gotta get past that guard dog. Then how do we do that? We'll nose vault over the dog and run into the warehouse before he knows what's happening. Like me, sure. I want to be Miss Cunocchio. Give me a break. Do it for cue ball's sake. <laughs> All right. Come on, we'll need a running start. Now what? Simple, you all. We quietly look for clues. Hey, this is dangerous! Yeah! Oh! Wait for the element of surprise. Nato, now I'll lure those suckers into my trap. Get out of there. Cue ball will be expelled from school and the play. Right, Diddy. We're lost in the school of it. I'm like freaking. Well, at least we got cute puppy. Guess again. I got a feeling this dog's a phony. Like wow, a mechanical dog. How grody. We gotta like get out of here. Yeah, come on, gang. Let's blow this place. Hold it. Clue. Whoever locked us in the closet must have dropped this. It's a bill from the Kuberg record shop. Like, outrageous. That's at the mall. I can do some shopping. Look, guys. Our suspects. And they're all here. How will we find out which one is the guilty one? I got it. I'll get their fingerprints on that record and compare them with the ones on Q Puppy's collar. Then we'll know who the thief is. Ah, this drum will do the trick. Now, to get the fingerprints. I just love rock and roll. <laughs> Huh? Wow, nice drum. Heavy sound. Ouch! What are you doing here, Cubert? 
All right, nobody move. Yeah, one of you guys is framing me. And the fingerprints on this record are gonna finger the bad guy. <laughs> I've got a nose for solving crime. At the Brightless Piano! Not anymore. Come on, we gotta match these fingerprints with those on Q-Puppy's collar. And then we'll know who's the guilty party. The fingerprints won't match. I know it. I'm gonna get expelled. Relax. We'll be at my place in a few minutes. But the record won't. Get the Yankee Piggy. Let go. We gotta help my pal so he can help me. I got it! Not for long, but Nana knows! Come on, guys! Look out, Street! Here I come! Uh-oh! I'd better slip them up with my slippery slippy dudes! Cover the other side. You're trapped, loser. That's what you think. That takes care of that. Now I'll jump. Go ahead. Make my day. to play the Tin Man. I'm a better actor than Cue Ball. He's a lousy actor. I may be lousy, but I'm good at being lousy. Where's Cue Puppy? He's safe in the school basement. You should be ashamed of yourself. Taking a little noser dog. Yay! Now I can be the star of the play. Um... We gotta follow the green marble street. Uh, I, I mean, the black brick boulevard. Or the, uh... Ah! It's the yellow brick road, you know! You can come up the stage! You can't act! We want our guy back! You saved him for this? I have to. He's my pal. Stuff it! Stuff them in the phone booth, you're headed for great fun. Stuff them through the window, the game has just begun. Stuff them all inside, but know just when to stop. Cause if you overstuff it, you'll blow off its top! And now here's Tipsy Tower with Mr. Tipsy Men. Will Tipsy tip the tower? Of course he will! But when? Stuff it and Tipsy Tower, each sold separately. When you're in the Sylvanian forest, you may not see the Sylvanian families, but they're around. Sylvanian! 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 
Transylvanian families A little word of love That's all made of Sylvanian families They're so cute and tiny You will love them, you will see Sister, brother, dad, and mother Doing things together And caring for each other Rabbits and raccoons There's a brown and gray Getting ready on a special day Sylvanian families Sylvanian families Each song separately Sylvanian families You're the one for me I think it's weird that they, they've taken these Saturday morning supercades and everybody's cut them apart over the years. Man, I wish we would just get like just the Saturday morning supercade box set or something like that. You know. Eh, it'll never happen, but we can hope. All right, here you guys go. This is one I haven't aired in a while. Fang Face. Uh, yeah, Fang Face. Uh, man, they loved these Scooby-Doo-esque cartoons back in the day, didn't they? They had the, 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 the teenagers that there was something different about one of them. Uh, you know, Scooby-Doo had a talking dog. You had Funky Phantom. One of them was a ghost. It inch high private eye. You had a private eye who was this big. Um, and then you get, you know, oh, Captain Caveman and the Teen Angels. That's right, Captain Caveman. Here we got a werewolf man that had some of the oddest rules ever to any werewolf ever in the history of werewolves. So, here you guys go. This is Fang Face, episode 5. Dinosaur days. A lot of that. A lot of that happened. So enjoy. And I will see you after this show. Fang face. Every 400 years, a baby werewolf is born into the Fangsworth family. And so when the moon shined on little Sherman Fangsworth, he changed into Fang face. The werewolf. Only the sun can change him back to normal. And so Little Fangs grew up and teamed up with three daring teenagers, Kim, Biff, and Pugsy. And together they find danger, excitement, and adventure. Save the day! Who can wrong the rights and right the wrongs? None other than Fang Face! There it is, gang. The Grand Canyon. And tomorrow morning, we start a relaxing weekend of rock hunting. And tonight, we hunt for a campsite to find a place to sleep. Yeah, you, me, and Biff, but not Fangs. He's already found a place to sleep. Good old Fangs. He's the heaviest sleeper in the world. And the snoriest. Yeah, we're right in the middle of an earthquake. Yeah, and the whole road splitting apart in front of us. Yikes! Look! It's a prehysterical dinosaurus. Oh my gosh, that's a gigantic Tyrannosaurus Rex. And they've been extinct for millions of years. Yeah, well this extinct one is wide awake and moving off into the canyon. And we're going after him. Rise and shine, we got a prehistorical misadventure on our hands. Hmm? Hey, what's going on, huh, Pug? What? Uh, is it morning yet, huh? No, it ain't morning yet. See? The moon's out. Look! Oh, no. what I say? Oh, yeah! The moon! The moon. The moon. The moon. The moon. No! No! Gotcha! <laughs> 
Let me out of here, you nutty werewolf! We're following a dinosaur! Ooh, ooh. Oh, sorry, Pugs! I don't know why I do these things! Look! The dinosaur is crossing that wooden bridge to the next canyon. that Tyrannowatsasaurus is up to? Oh, my gosh! He's chewing the bridge up! No! Lilikers! It's a thousand-foot drop! What do we do now, Biff? Our only chance is to use the tent as a parachute. Oh, save us! <laughs> I did good, huh? I did good, hey, Punch! Huh? Yeah, for once you did precisely right. Look, the dinosaurs vanished. Which means we'd better get back to town and report this to the authorities at the Science Institute. So we followed the dinosaur. And after he chewed up the bridge, we lost him somewhere in the canyons. A living Tyrannosaurus Rex in the 20th century? Oh, ridiculous. Absolutely impossible. What's your opinion, Professor Braniff? You're our leading dinosaur expert. A living Tyrannosaurus Rex is a remote possibility. There are theories about huge areas deep underground where dinosaurs may have hibernated millions of years ago. Uh, one of those underground caverns may have been cracked open by the earthquake, releasing the dinosaur. Well, gang, it looks like it's up to us to prove that giant creature really exists. And that means we're heading for dinosaur caverns. Dinosaur Caverns is big enough to be the home for 10,000 Tyrannosaurus. Did you hear that? It's him. Yeah, but like Fangface would ask, where, where, where? Yeah, just like I said, where, where, where? There's only one way to find out. We split up and search every inch of these caverns. Shh. You gotta be quiet, not a sound. <laughs> Look, inside of that cave. Ooh, ooh, it's him. <laughs> Quick, get up that ledge and into that cave. Wait a minute, how come I gotta go first, huh? Because if I go first and get hurt, who's gonna visit you in the hospital? Oh, why didn't you say so in the first place? <laughs> so smart. And remember, shh, not a sound. Be careful. We're getting close to him. Yikes! This is too close for comfort. I'll get him, Pugs! Listen. That sounds like face. Do you give up? What's happening? Fangface is trying to wrestle down that 40-foot dinosaurus. Hey, 
my fine face. Let go of that dinosaurus's leg and run for it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And just when I have him. Ooh. Now let's get out of here. That monster's coming after us. Keep running until we get to the edge of that big pit up ahead, and then we'll use one of those fallen tree limbs to pole vault over it. On your mark, get set, vault! Yay! Somebody lassified us! He's coming after us. Let's get out of here. And when we last saw the Tyrannosaurus, he was heading straight here toward town. And if that monster gets loose in the city, it's going to mean big trouble. Yeah, big, big, big. <laughs> Unfortunately, I must leave for my home in the mountains, but I'll try to find a way to stop that dinosaur. What are they doing back here? It's all right, Dr. Ito. They're here to help me. Hey, as long as we're alone in this scientific laboratory, why don't we mix up a shrink formula and shrinkify that dinosaurus down to mouse size? Good idea. You and Fangface stay here and work on it. Kim and I'll work in the next lab. Mm-hmm. Four ounces sodium soda five. An ounce of protrasium bicarbitrate. A pint of reducing cream. A quart of brake fluid. The shrinkify is gone for sight! You better believe it. That wacky concoction shrunk us down to most size. <laughs> Yummy! A pudgy on rye. Oh no, he saw food and he's gonna eat a pug witch. No, my face. Don't. You hear? Don't! <laughs> Now to calm you down. <laughs> Looks like Pugsy and Fangface did it. They invented a shrink formula. Yeah, and thanks to Fangface, we'll be pipsqueaks for life. Hey, what's happening? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> ooh, that pickles. I guess their shrink formula is a flopperoonie. Yikes! It's him! Oh my gosh! The Tyrannosaurus is messing up the whole city! What do we do now, Biff? Over there. Look! A container of sleeping gas. It's our only chance. We've got to see if we can put the dinosaur to sleep. That's perfect. As soon as the dinosaur is under us, we'll lower Fangface down on this rope and he'll spritz him with a sleeping gas. Hey, Dinosaurus! You don't scare me! Get ready to go Betty Bye! In one of those sun deck lounges! Sun?
Oh, no. That picture of the sun changed fearless fang face into fearful fangs. Help me, me! Okay. Pull! <laughs> Gee, guys, thanks for saving me. Eh, don't mention it. Look, the dinosaur is getting away. Come on. Our only hope is to get to Professor Branoff's home and see if he can make Pugsy's shrink formula permanent. Ah! It's a giant dinosaur! He's wrecking the marina! And he's heading for Midtown Dam. If he wrecks that, he'll flood the whole city. Step on it, Biff. We gotta stop that monster. Uh -uh. I'm not coming face to face with that thing again. You won't have to. Here, take a look at this picture of the moon and you won't remember a thing. Huh? Why look at the moon? Where is he? Where'd he go? Where's that monster? Go on in. Go on in. Yeah, and just remember, it's the monster you're after and not me. Pugsy accidentally invented this shrink formula. It works, but it doesn't last. We figured you might be able to analyze it and find a way to make it permanent. It shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, wait here while I go to my lab and work on it. Uh-oh, looks like Fangface could use our resistance. What we need is a dentist. This notebook is interesting. Wait a second. I think I found something. Hey, what took you so long, huh? What? Because we were over there with Kim. Yikes! She's gone. She must have been yanked behind this secret wall. No time to look for a secret switch. Getting through that wall is a job for the big bad werewolf. Why, that's me, Pud. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow the wall down. Let's go. <laughs> Braniff's got a hidden secret area for a backyard. Look. Help! Over here! It's Braniff, and he's got Kim lacerated in a cage. And if you make one move, I'll push it off this ledge and into the jaws of the Tyrannosaurus. Then it was you who saved the dinosaur in the caverns. Yes! Soon I shall have him trained to obey my every command. Ace Cuckoo, what are we gonna do? You can do nothing. I have made your shrinking formula permanent, and I shall use it on all of you, so you will never reveal my secret. That's what he thinks. Fangface, you get the dinosaur riled up so he distracts Braniff while Pugsy and I rescue Kim. Yeah, yeah! You can leave it to me! Leave it to me! You've ruined my plans! 
I must get my control device. Step on it. We can't let him get that device. Leave it to me, Pug. Oh, get him. I got him. And now I'll get him. Good work, Fang Face. Duck! Biff and Kim are trapped, and we gotta save them! Ooh, ooh! How are we gonna save them? What are we gonna do, Pugs? Huh? Huh? What are we gonna do? You climb up that tree. I'll catapult you through the air right over to Dinosaurus's head. You pour the shrink of fire on him, and poof! He's miniaturized! Yeah, yeah! You're a genius, Pug! Miniaturized. Ready! Aim! Fire! Shrink of fire the way! Ooh, ooh. And got the dinosaur down to mouse size. Yeah, yeah! I got an itsy bitsy teensy weensy mosasaurus! <laughs> you kids did a great job. The dinosaur's shrunken size will make him much easier to study. But how did Braniff get the dinosaur to obey him? He used this electronic command device just like dog trainers use a dog whistle. And that winds up the case of the miniaturized dinosaurus. Except for one thing. Coochie, coochie. Coo. Time to change back, Fang Face. Look at his picture of his son. Huh? Hey, what happened? How come I'm holding a canary cage with my finger in the mouth of an ugly looking pint sized mouth, huh? How come, huh? Ooh, ooh, ooh! For a pint-sized mouse, he sure has a quart-sized bite! Ooh! <laughs> Sit for a spell and have some chocolatey grahams and marshmallows galore. An enchanted part of this nutritious breakfast. S'mores Crunch cereal. It's s'mores fun for breakfast. <laughs> I don't believe what's in my s'mores crunch. Zeus, the new crunchy candy bubble gum. You can get a pack inside specially marked boxes. And, uh, <laughs> zook out. <laughs> of power. Motorized forces of good and evil you build for battle, each sold separately. Your fate is sealed, Jeffron. The Tech Dynasty has no mercy. The battle's just beginning, War Tech. The Star Legion surrender to no one. Legions of power build for battle. Legions of power. New from Tonka. Hey, hope you like Fang Face. Um, I do. It's one of them cartoons, man, I've had a soft spot in my heart for since I was a kid. Um, you know, I remember watching it came when it came back on the Cartoon Network, and then it came back to Boomerang, and now it's not on Boomerang, because Boomerang... Yeah, I, I used to love Boomerang, man, because Boomerang had everything. Like, it's Centurions, and Thundar the Barbarian, and you know, Fang Face, and all that stuff, and it just sort of went to only showing... Like Tom and Jerry and 
a handful of other cartoons. It's, it's, it's kind of disappointing. What are you going to do about it? Alright. Since we did the werewolf man. You know, with the, with the fanged face. With the fanged face. Now we're going to go back to a cartoon I haven't aired in a while. That is the Drac Pack. That is right. Um, I love the Drac Pack, man. They, 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 they love bringing back the, the uh, what I, Universal Monsters. Your classics. Your Wolfman. Your Frankenstein's Monster. Your Dracula. So. And then they made all these other ones. So. I I really like it. Um, I, to this day, I still think that, 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 uh, that, oh my god. That, he looks like a transvestite. Well, no. He looks like Dr. Frankenfurter from a uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. No offense against anybody. I still think he looks like Dr. Frankenfurter from Rocky Horror Picture Show. Tell me I'm wrong. Sorry, I don't mean any, no offense against it. I just think he looks like uh, Tim Curry. No, no, ain't nothing wrong with looking like Tim Curry. Shoot, wish I looked like Tim Curry. So... All right, this is Drag Pack. This is episode uh, six, Night of the Turbite. Love doing the nights of too, days, nights. So, yeah. All right, here you guys go. Have fun, enjoy, and I'll see you after the episode. From the monsters of the past comes a new generation dedicated to reversing the evil image of their forefathers. Under the leadership of none other than Count Dracula, known as Big D, three teenagers formed the Do-Gooder group, named the Dracula. With special powers, they can transform into super mighty monsters and use their skills against all evildoers, especially the diabolical Dr. Dread and his renegade rascals, Toad, Fly, Mummy Man, and Vampira, a group known as Ogre, the organization of generally rotten enterprises. It's right versus wrong, good over greed, niceness against naughtiness. That's the dedication of the terrific trio, Frankie, Howler, and Drax Jr., the Drax Pack. The fabulous floating dreadnought has reached its destination. Cut the engine, Toad. Please, Dr. Dread, can I drive it some more, please? You heard me, Toad. Oh, please, Dr. Dread, can't I? Please, can't I? I said cops! Aye, aye, Doctor, right away. Now, drop the anchor. Aye, aye, Doctor. <laughs> Anchors away! And now to join the others in the laboratory. Come, Toad, hop to it. <laughs> Greetings, OGRE members. I suppose you're wondering why I called you here. <laughs> yes, we are buzzing with excitement. Yeah, what's up? Yes, Doctor, what sinister scheme do you have? I want to demonstrate my latest creation, which will make me the richest villain in the world. The Turbites! Turbites, sir. And what do these Turbite eggs do, Dr. Dredd? <laughs> I already know. Don't I, Dr. Dredd? Don't I? Oh, yes, Toad. You may help me demonstrate. Turbite! Amazing, fantastic, diabolically underhanded, Doctor Dread. That was nothing. Yes, <laughs> sir. You got some kind of plan, Dad. Oh, yes, Mummy, I'm glad you asked. I've got prodigious plans for these cute little creatures. Yeah. Diabolically delightful, Dr. Dredd. Yes, but what about the Dread Pack? Uh, 
I've got special prodigious plans for them, too. <laughs> Come on, Drac! Hurry up! We'll be late for the monster disco party. It's gonna be great! Hold it! I was just checking Uncle Dracula's invitation. What does Big D have to say, Drac? Well, we're supposed to go in costume. Boy, <laughs> what are we waiting for? Right, the Drac Whack. Wacko! <laughs> Watch your manners, Pat. Remember, we're out to show that this new generation of monsters are dedicated to goodness and niceness. Yeah, instead of rottenness, thanks to your Uncle Dracula. Shouldn't we have checked to see if Big D wanted to go with us? Exactly what I was about to do, Frankie. He's only a push button away. I'll activate the Drac view. Drac Pat calling Big D. Right, Pat, calling Big D. He must have gone. There's a note. Out to lunch. Signed, Count Dracula. <laughs> yeah, probably getting a quick bite before the disco. <laughs> of course. It is midnight. Guess we'll see him at the party. Was somebody calling me? Mm -hmm. Oh, interruptions, interruptions. It must be those kids again. Why do they have to keep asking my advice? Do good, I keep telling them. Make up for my badness. I'm tired of being a fright for sore eyes. Now I just like to rest. Vampires have to knock it off once in a while too, you know. So This is it! Slimy Swamp! Oh! Oh! Dig that music! Okay, Pat. The ghouls and guys are tripping the fright fantastic. Grab on! Hiya, Miss Monster! Hey, what are we waiting for? Let's dance! Looks like Howler's got quite an armful. Oh, yeah. Ooh, well, I mean, I'll have the stains. Go, Frankie! Oh, uh, sure! Oh, uh, do you? Yep. You know something? You really grow on a guy, Miss Flytrap. Oh, they don't call me a clean vine for nothing, fella. What a glamour gulch. So many gorgeous ghouls to choose from. <laughs> Easy, ladies. There's enough for everybody. Sorry, girls. This one's reserved for me. Haven't we met before? I'm sure I'd remember. I suppose that's true. You're a disco delight, handsome. Let me tell you, Lagoonie Lily, oh, when we dance, sparks fly! <laughs> oh, you light up my life! Whoops, oh! Don't overdo it! Now, I guess she took me seriously. It's not your fault, Howard. She's short circuit because she's a robot. Right, right. Uh oh. Robots. All robots except me! Vampira! I should have known. Dr. Dredd's Dragon Lady. It was fun while it lasted, boys. But now it's fun, fun, fun of time! <laughs> what happened? Caught by the old disco in the swamp trap. Complete with phony invitation. Hmm. Smells like ogres behind all of this. Brilliant deduction, my funny friend. Dr. Dredd. Thanks for dropping into my disco drag pack, but there is a slight cover charge for underhanded deeds. <laughs> Uh-oh, we're trapped. 
Exactly, my bold neck adult. With you three do-gooders out of the way, I will make my demands for the return of the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower? But no one's taken it. True. Not yet. But watch. Right now, my dredgeable is hovering over Paris, about to pluck the precious prime. Hold her steady, mummy man. Now to hatch our little plot with these evil eggs. Turbites Tower! Those little turbites are right on target. Okay, mummy man, lower the hook. Hook away. <laughs> pull her up! Pull her up! <laughs> ah, delightfully destructive. This is only the beginning for my incredible turbines. Soon all the wonders of the world will be mine. The Statue of Liberty, the Benefits, Mount Rushmore, the Washington Mott... That's the most rotten, low-down, sneaky... You forgot despicable. And despicable scheme I've ever heard. Flattery will get you nowhere, Drac. I think his rotten scheme means ransom. Right you are, Wolfie. For five billion dollars apiece, the proceeds going to OGRE. For charitable purposes, of course. Of course, to further the cause of life, liberty, and the pursuit of craftiness. But you must excuse me, I've got a date with a lady in New York, and she's carrying a torch for me. <laughs> Farewell! Oh, that Dr. Dredd sure steams me up. Me too. In fact, vaporize is my next move. And I am howling mad! Oh. <laughs> I've already cracked this case, Drek. <laughs> Last one out is a rotten monster. <laughs> nice going. It's a clean break. Oh, I don't like to smash things up. Let's cut out. The Drek Pack has to put on its act. Come on. Next stop, New York. The Statue of Liberty looks safe. We better change to normal and look around. No sign of Dr. Dredd on the island. Or his turbite. Time for your meal, little baby. Turbite. Statue. <laughs> it's those terrible turbines! Oh no, the old fake baby in the buggy routine. Gosh, look at those the babies eat. Oh, 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 we've got to stop them! Well, that's exactly my plan. Come on, let's go. Hold on, Drac Pack. Why run when you can ride? <laughs> Okay, mummy man, let's wrap things up. <laughs> if there's one thing I can't stand, it's being paid. I've got that meddlesome drag pack right where I want them. Now to sink those three goody goodies for good. Hold it steady, fly. <laughs> you don't have to tell me fly. How to fly? <laughs> Dr. Dredd, you can start laying your plans. Turbite! Doc! It's Dracwack time! <laughs> but we're stuck too tight! Well, shake us loose! We're shaking, but it's not us! Uh oh, guys! We'll have to switch to plan C! 
What's Splatoon C? I think he means Splash in the Sea! Oh! <laughs> the Statue of Liberty is mine! Oh, mine! And the Drag Pack is gone for good. Too bad. That Drag Junior was kind of cute. Uh -huh. I mean, for a good guy. We're drifting out the sea. And we're sinking. What we need now is a rack whack. But we can't get our hands free, Drag. All it takes is a finger. Now that's easy. Rack pack, whack -a! All right, Pack. Keep an eye and ear out for that dredgeable. And you, Howley, throw in a nose. I've picked up a rotten egg. Get ahead. And it's not just turbines. Look, the dredgeable and the Statue of Liberty. Red will see the three of us. What's our cover? Well, two's a company. And three's a crowd. The old Operation Bat Blob will allow us to sneak up undetected. What's our position, Fly? <laughs> we are directly over Dread Quarters, Dr. Dread. Prepare for a landing immediately. Can I do it, Dr. Dredd? Please, please, may I, may I, may I? I never get to land. Oh, may I? Read it, read it, read it. Don't touch me, Toad. You'll give me warts. How revolting. Bad, Toad. Bad, bad, bad. The dredgeable's dropping. Don't lose them. Ah, don't worry. I'll spot them with my bed scope. Oh. Boy, look out. Look, the red quarters. Blast the porthole, Howley. So we can all see. <gasps> the dredgeable's going in for a landing. And so are we. Follow him. Easy does it. Careful, fly. We don't want to. Damage the merchandise. I said gently, you clumsy clod. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dr. Dredd. Can I swat him? Can I swat him, Dr. Dredd? Can I? Can I? Baby, give me that. Thank you, Dr. Dredd. I needed that. This is not a fly swatter, you croaking creep. It's a toad tapper. <laughs> now everyone into Dread Quarters on the double. Now what do we do, Drak? Plan D, guys. We're gonna take her down. Right down the funnel. Well, I just hope that this volcano doesn't sneeze. That's what I call a big haul. Oh, who believe this? Oh, the Eiffel Tower and the Statue of Liberty in Ogre's Red Court. It's a monstrous job, but we're dedicated to uplifting work. Let's go, Pack. And now, our next target, the pyramids. <laughs> What's that noise? That's it, Rack. Keep lifting. Got it, Pack. Someone's in the volcano. It's a Rack Pack. I couldn't have said it better myself. It's the Drop Pack. How dare those two gooders invade the inner sanctum of Olga? After them. Hoist away, Drag. Good work. Climb aboard so we can cut out. Huh? Raggy, look. Oh, no. The whole older outfit. Oh, unwelcome intruders, eh? Just hanging around. <laughs> well, these will shut you up, eh? Whoa! Get them! Oh no! <laughs> Glad you guys could drop in. Woo! <laughs> that was a close one! You ninja folks, you missed them! Let's get out of here. Full drag power! How are you humiliating? They are looting our loot! Stop, thieves! Fly! Seal the volcano! Fast! I am sleeping clean! We're cutting it awfully close! Oh, room. See? Safe at last! Not till we get those monuments back! Let's head for home! Hey, they're taking away! I know they're getting away, but so what? I can still steal the pyramids with my four turbines. Ready, ready, ready. But Dr. Dredd, there are only three. Don't contradict me, Toad. Oh, no. There is a turbine missing. Why didn't you tell me, Toad? Bad, Toad. Bad. 
search the island and don't come back until you've found that turbite. Well, we got these monuments away from Dredd, but that won't keep him from stealing something else. Yes, with those turbites, Dredd still has an ace up his sleeve. <laughs> and I've got something up mine. What's that? A muscle? <laughs> a turbite? Right. I hate leaving a place without a souvenir. Good work, Frankie. We'll give Dredd a taste of his own medicine. <laughs> Dr. Dredd, we searched everywhere. The turbite is not on the island. Maybe it swam away? They hate water, you fog-headed frog. If the turbite's not here, maybe it... No, it couldn't be there. Okay, Frankie. It's turbite time. Turbite. Red quarters. <laughs> It's eating my island. Let's get out of here. Good idea. Ready? Let's go. I give the orders here. Yes, Dr. Dredd. Let's go. Stop! I command your turbine. Stop! That turbine must have had some appetite. I can't believe he ate the whole thing. Roll! 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 Why are you stopping, Toad? Oh, look behind us. I thought you said we ate water. Oh, how humiliating being egged on by an egg. Roll faster, roll faster. What? Why? Why? Now that we've defeated Ogre, we can go home and relax. Relax? Uh-oh, it's Big D. How can you relax? Do you adolescent adult heads know what you have done? Sure. We defeated Dr. Dredd. Yes, um... And returned the Statue of Liberty and the Eiffel Tower. Yes, but to the wrong address. Yeah, the Statue of Liberty is in Paris and the Eiffel Tower is in New York. Don't worry, Big D. We'll get it all straightened out. Okay, Pack. Plan FI. An operation fix it. Kids today. I try to help all I can, but they still goof up. That's all the things I get. No! Chalk, chalk, chocolatey taste! Cocoa Puffs are part of this complete breakfast! Uh-oh! Sunny, want some munchy Cocoa Puffs? Munchy! Want some crunchy Cocoa Puffs? Crunchy! Chalk, chalk, chocolatey Cocoa Puffs! Yahoo! I'm Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs! Cocoa Puffs, you really send me! Hope you like the Drag Pack. Hope you still like the Drag Pack. And... Now, I'm going to bring back one that everybody seems to like, that just gets so much crap that, that I don't get it, and the people who watch this don't get it. Um, that's Kissy Fur. I got you guys, there's, there's some of you guys that said that, that, that you've never seen Kissy Fur before I started airing them, and now you love that cartoon. Um, man, just, you go online, there's a lot of hate. But then again, I think there's just a lot of hate online anyways. So... You know, I'll go lie. I get crap for doing what I do now. I don't care. I don't care at all. So I am a hundred percent don't care. All right. And uh, here you guys go. 
This is Kissy Fur. I don't know what else to say about Kissy Fur other than I, you know, don't get the hate. I say that every, um, probably every week, and I apologize if I keep repeating myself because I don't, I don't understand it. But here you guys go. This is Kissy Fur episode twelve. This is the barely, barely bodyguard and duck who came to dinner. So have fun. <laughs> Stick tooth. Can I see it? Uh huh. Looks good enough to eat, right, Flip? Mmm, <laughs> it is good enough to eat. <laughs> see it, <ya>, tooth. <laughs> hey, that's not very nice. I'm telling Kissy food. <laughs> Get back to the licorice stick now! Oh yeah? Who's gonna make me, sissy face? I am! Way to go, Lenny! You showed him you sure did! Yeah, I guess I did! That'll teach you to mess with me! <laughs> and since I'm the biggest, I get the most licorice, right? You hey, give that! Share and share alike, right, Lenny? That's right, Flip. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Have a nice day. Well, hi there, little bear. Hi, Dad. You and Lenny having problems, little bear? Yeah, but nothing I can't handle. Well, if you need any help, just let me know. Look out, Lenny! Your turn, Dwayne. Oh, but it looks so muddy. Come on, Dwayne. Okay, hurry. okay. My time. No fair, Lenny. No, no cutting fair. ahead in line, please. Wait for your own turn, Lenny. Yeah? Who's gonna stop me? I am. Now let me show you turkeys how the big guys do it. Now it's your turn. <laughs> Bert, what you doing? <laughs> That's a very weird exercise you're doing, Kissy Fur. 
Kissifer, isn't it about time you told your old dad what's going on? Oh, it's Lenny. He's been pushing us around. And he's so big, nobody can stand up to him, including me. Hmm, sounds like what you kids have got to do is stick together. Try using teamwork. Think about it. Howie, he's absolutely right. Well, that's good. And we're going to teach Lenny a lesson. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. So, what's for lunch today, guys? Not bad. The big giganto size is for my lunch. And the little economy size is for... My snack later. <laughs> All right, Lenny, give him back a Ralph. A Ralph what? Or else my cousin Willie's gonna get real mad. I don't care about any dumb cousin of yours, sissy face. <laughs> Who called me dumb? Huh? huh? Um, it was just that warthog I told you about, Willie. But I'm sure he didn't mean it. Well, he better not, or I'm coming after him. Well, I, I, I'm sure he didn't mean it. Uh, uh, right, Lenny? Uh, right, right, right. Uh, I was just looking to see if they were all eating well-balanced meals. <laughs> then he'd better give back those lunches. Right now. <clears throat> I mean, right now. Oh, 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 he was just going to. Uh, right, Lenny? <laughs> yes. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. That boy sounds kind of familiar. I think I ought to meet this willy guy. Oh, no, you can't. I mean, you don't want to meet him. He's so big and mean. And see, those are his footprints. Mm -hmm. who, 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 who's that? D -d 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 don't ask. It's me, Willie. And I'm coming out! Uh, that's okay. We were just leaving. And don't come back! <laughs> hmm. Lenny! Where's Sissy Face? <laughs> we don't know, Lenny. Well, tell him Big Lenny's gonna splat him one. Cousin Willie wouldn't like that, Lenny. Oh, then why don't you tell Willie right now? Oh, Willie's not around right now. He only comes out at night because he's a cave bear. Oh, then meet me at the caves tonight. And if your cousin Willie doesn't come out, you're going to be one sorry bear. <laughs> <laughs> I just got here. Everybody's here, Lenny. Good. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is to prove there's no Cousin Willie in there. Oh, this is very spooky. Just like I thought. Nobody here. Now I'll teach that sissy face to try and scare me with some phony cousin. Okay, okay, I'll be good. I'll be good. You better be, Buster. And furthermore... Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Why, you little twerps? Sissy face, I'll teach you to mess with Lenny the Warthog. <laughs> you dumb old phony. Yeah, dumb, 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 dumb. Now get out of that suit and fight like a. 
Really with him. I was uh, just in the neighborhood and I. Uh... Quick! There's a shortcut down there! <gasps> Ooh, icky! Do I have to? <laughs> Go! I have to! You won't bully us anymore just because you're bigger? Yeah, yeah, I promise. Now hurry! See you, Lenny. Love to stay longer, but uh, Kissy Fur and I have to get home and I, uh... Yeah! Just going! Ha! <laughs> yeah! Hiya, guys! Hi, Hi Lenny. Lenny. So, what's for lunch? Hold it, Lenny! No yeah, one will remember! I had my fingers crossed! See? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had his fingers crossed. <laughs> now, give me all your lunches. Way to go, team. Yay! Hooray for Yay! Teamwork! Hooray for teamwork! Hey, hey teamwork. guys! I was only kidding! All right! Only kidding! Look! I have a whole bunch of licorice sticks at my house. So come on over and we'll pig out. Uh, <laughs> no offense, Dwayne. And then I'll make some lunch for everybody. And after that, I'll give you all ice cream and stuff and uh, you will all have a good time. Thanks, old sport. Should be good as new in no time. Okay, Reggie. Your bed's all ready. Huh? 
Reggie, Reggie, what's wrong? Oh, it must be my injury. Perhaps I'd better lie down. But that's my bed. Relax, little bear. Reggie needs his rest. You can come sleep with your old dad where it's nice and quiet. <laughs> I'm afraid I needed the strength, you know. How are you feeling today, Reggie? Oh, a tad better, thanks. Dad, where are the berries? Oh, sorry, son. There's plenty of swampweed grits. Swampweed grits? Yuck! I've got to find some new planks for the paddle cap. So take good care of Reggie, son. But, Dad... Kissy Fur, he's our guest. Okay, Reggie, your bath's ready. Ah, oh, good show, lad, good show. <laughs> Be an old sport and get my back, will you? Kissy for fluff my pillow. Kissy for bring me a snack. I tell you, Bee Honey, that Reggie's driving me nuts. <laughs> What's he gonna get, Will? How should I know? I'm not a duck. Feels better already. I'll give it a bit of a test flight. He sure is a good flyer. <laughs> Reggie, you old ace, you, you've still got it. Reggie, I'm home. Uh. <laughs> so glad you're <laughs> back. I was growing weak <laughs> with hunger. Okay, one more snack coming up. That's a good sport. And light on the mayo. The nectar of the gods. Oh, excellent, excellent. Feeling any better, Reggie? Uh, not really. Oh, oh, I'm afraid my recovery will take longer than I expected. Much, much longer. Suppose Reggie never gets any better. Oh, not a pretty thought. But he sure doesn't look too good, Kissy Fur. He was flying pretty good. What? He was flying all around your house today. I saw him. Then he's not sick. He's faking. And you fell for it. <laughs> oh, Kissy Fur. <coughs> I feel terribly weak. <laughs> Boy, do I feel dumb. That's because you are dumb. <laughs> but my dad always says, don't get mad, get even. Get even? Yeah, you ought to teach that dumb duck a lesson. Oh, I don't know about that. Okay, you want to let that duck push you around? That's your business. Well, maybe you're right. Of course I'm right. Ah, 
this drive through the swamp was a splendid idea, lad. Splendid. The fresh air should do me a world of good. There is something I should warn you about, Reggie. There's an old legend that a very scary monster lives in this part of the swamp. Monster? <laughs> yes, well, legends are rather silly, don't you think? I say, what's wrong, lad? Gee, I don't know. You better wait here while I go for help. Righto. I take your time, old sport. Okay, guys, time for Operation Sitting Duck. Oh, this is gonna be good. <laughs> 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 Cured, huh? Oh, uh, yes. Uh. It's a, it's a miracle. Well, uh, do I have to run? Cheerio. <laughs> 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 Saves him right. <laughs> hey, out of my way! Oh! Watch out for Reggie! Help me! Help me! That's the kids. Come on. One of you want it first. You know, little bear, getting even doesn't always make your problems go away. Yeah, that's for sure, Dad. Oh, Kissifer, would you mind freshening my lemonade? And some cookies would be nice, too. Oh, my pillow needs flopping, and, and my back needs scratching, and do be a love, won't you? of the Universe Mighty Cycle from Tonka. Adult assembly required. It's got bold galactic designs and super sleek styling. Masters of the Universe Mighty Cycle with big, wide track wheels that let you master turns. Master spins. Master the action. Masters of the Universe Mighty Cycle. New from Tonka. force in the universe can contain the power and the fury of rock lore shaking quaking crashing breaking rock lord powerful living rock it's so 
separately from Tonka. Hey, hope you're still liking Kissy Fur. If you don't, let me know, man. Um, I keep airing it because there's just so many episodes of this cartoon that, that it'd be a while before I run out. So, all right. We're going to bring back one. I have another one I haven't aired for a while. And that is The Thing. Uh, man, yet again, we go back to the uh, Scooby Doo aspect of this. You got kids fighting crime. And uh, the fact that this was teamed up with the Flintstones was, was always odd to me when I was a kid. It seemed weird. But then again, I went and seen, uh, as a kid, I went and seen the Jetsons movie. And born on the 4th of July at the drive-in at the same time. So, definitely a weird time to be a kid. Alright, here you guys go. This is The Thing, episodes 15 and 16. And it's the Big Bride Race and The Thing, Treasure Island. So, have fun, enjoy. <laughs> That's good. Maybe I have a chance in the cross-country bike race tomorrow. You've been training like your whole life depended on it. What's the big deal? Well, your sister's the race queen and... And the winner of the race gets to escort her to the dance, right? <laughs> right. Well, that's getting a date the hard way. It's late, Kelly. I better be heading for home. On second thought, make that the bike shop. Everybody to Centerville High's traditional, never to be forgotten, uh, our big, uh, well, of course, our annual cross country charity bike race. Uh, uh, the winner will escort our race queen to the prom tonight, and uh, here she is, uh, Miss Betty Hartman. Thank you, friends, and may the best man win, because I'm waiting for him. Oh, brother. Best man, huh? That's me. <laughs> hey, uh, did you get them phony signs like I told you? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, don't worry, Spike. By the time you cross the finish line, we'll have those other guys all peddling to Alaska. <laughs> And now, uh, making this very special appearance for charity, is that wonderful hero, his famous orange rockness, uh, the what's it? Oh, no, oh, the thing. Oh, <laughs> the thing? Oh, he's wonderful. Thanks, Miss Twilly. Thanks to you kids for helping charity by showing up. And since I'm the race queen, the thing will be dancing with me. Guess who's joining the race? Oh, look at that boy. Hey, fancy pants. What kind of bike is that? The best that money can buy, naturally. Well, it ain't gonna do you no good against me. <laughs> oh, really? I intend to leave you behind in the dirt. Where you belong. Yeah. Well, listen to me, you. Oh, what place is entrance? Oh, we're starting the race in a few moments. Gotta hurry, or Benji ain't gonna make the race. Oh, a thing. Oh, wait, I, I must speak to you. Uh, oh, you see, thing, if you and I at the dance tonight could... Uh, uh, well, why, Benji, where's the thing? Beats me, Miss Twilly. Oh, but my dear boy, he was just... In, and then I was... Just, and he was... Oh, I... Oh, I do believe it's time I had my glasses checked again. I just came to wish you good luck, Ronald. You can forget that dude, Betty, because I'm the one you'll be dancing with tonight. Where's Benji? He won't show up. He's a chicken. Is that so? Look, here comes the chicken that's going to cook your goose. Sorry I'm late. Good luck. I'll be rooting for you. But on your marks, everyone. Ready, get set, go! Looks like Benji got himself stuck in last place. 
monitors, and Benji is first, and Spike second, and Ronald Radford is third. Benji's in the lead? Impossible! Benji's in the lead. How about that? Wait till Ronald makes his move. Good breeding will tell. Good breeding? This is a bike race, not a dog show. First, I'll take care of old Ronald, and then I'll go after Benji. <laughs> There goes Spike. <laughs> He's really moving. <laughs> and here comes Fancy Pants. Let's give him a change of scenery. <laughs> Uh-oh, detour. The lake. We have another report, everybody. Benji's still in the lead. Spike is second. And Ronald is water skiing. Uh, uh, water skiing? It's that trick bike of his. Ronald's bound to win. Not unless it's a bragging contest. If I can keep ahead of Spike, I just might win this race. I'm going to get that kid. Now I'll catch that Benji. <laughs> See you later, loser. <laughs> Yay! Help! Spike went off the cliff. Thing ring, do your thing. Rescue that creep, Spike. Yuck! The king's a living legend has to do. Help! You gotta get me down! Hang on to your bike, kid. You're going back on the track. Whoa! It goes for a loop the loop. That'll change back to Benji. Get into the race. Oh, yeah, my goodness. The race has changed completely. And now Ronald is in the lead. What did I tell you? Yeah, we Spike and Benji have fallen way behind. Something must have happened. Come on, Benji. Looks like I'll win this race. And why not? I deserve it. Nobody in sight. Whoa! I'm back on course and still in the lead. Ha ha ha. That Ronald ain't far ahead of me now. Whoa! Train coming! That was close. Good thing I wasn't riding the handlebars. Oh, uh, the race is almost over, and Ronald is still in the lead. Uh, Spike is second, and Benji's back in third place. Kelly, you might as well give up on Benji. Benji won't give up, so why should I? It's your last chance to stop Ronald, and it better work. Yeah. Or else Spike's gonna be awful mad with us. 
another detour? Uh-oh, low bridge. I still got a chance. Here's where we take care of Benji. Oh, yeah. He's gonna fly. Oh, boy. <laughs> Uh-oh. Tight turn. Wow. I made it. <laughs> oh, yeah, here they come. Oh, this is so exciting. Come on, Ronald. Come on, Benji. I got it made. Hey, Spike One. <laughs> and the winner is... Who is it? I think Benji was ahead by a nose. No, it was Ronald. Oh, yeah. Oh, why, it's a three-way tea. Oh, no, a, a fish fry. Oh, I, I mean a three-way tie. Look. It sure is. But then who's my escort for the dance? Oh, they all are, dear girl. Oh, my. <laughs> Benji, you're supposed to dance on your feet, not mine. Sorry, Betty. I'll be more careful. My turn, sport. Well, how did you like dancing with the uh, tangle toes? Forget it. As a dancer, Benji's the worst. Get lost, fancy pants. It's my turn. Now, that's dancing, ain't it? Yes, it. Shove off. I'm gonna... You're gonna what? I'm gonna get out of here. Oh, thanks. I'm really dancing with you. Oh, I've dreamed of this all my life. My pleasure, little lady. Oh, and, uh, may I cut in, Betty? <laughs> oh, oh, thing. Uh, they're playing our song. <laughs> collecting marine life for our science class, Ronald, thanks to you and this terrific boat. This little craft? Nothing, really. Just a dinghy from Dada's yacht. Uh, be a good fellow, Benji. Cast off and uh, start the engine. Start the engine? Uh, right. Yo! Huh? huh? There, Betty. Can't you hear his knees knocking? Looks like it's up to me and the thing. Gotta get my rings together. Thing ring, do your thing! I hate being boxed in. It's the thing! Save it, thing! Hang on, ladies. The idol of millions is diving into the briny. Grubby mitts of this boat. Dang! Oh, you're sensational. You're just marvelous. You're terrific. Nothing to it. Now hang on for a cruise with the SS Ting. <laughs> wow, that engine got away from me. You ruined Dada's dinghy. Sorry, Ronald, I... Don't sorry me, you shipwrecker. We've been here an hour, and I haven't caught a single specimen. At this rate, the only thing I'll bring back to school is... Sam. 
hand in my shoe. Patience, my good girl. There are always some low forms of life to be found around these rocks. Take a look. Where? On the rocks. Fancy pants rattled in his tails. Well, let's see what rare specimens I've caught. I could do better than this at the city dump. Wait a minute. Let's see if there's anything inside this box. <laughs> Some hall. They must be going in a junk business. What is it? It looks like a treasure map. A treasure map? We'll all be rich. Big deal. I'm already rich. Guys, they found a treasure map. We're going to be millionaires. Oh, yeah, millionaires. But uh, if they got the map, how come we're going to be millionaires? Because <laughs> I got a plan to beat them at their own game. The map says the next landmark is an eagle's nest on a line 68 degrees from this bent tree. The eagle's nest should be right on top of that tall rock. Great. I can hardly wait to pick out my jewelry from the treasure, Kelly. Would you like to see me wear something in pearls? Yeah, a choker. We'll follow him to the next clue, and then we'll beat him to the treasure. <laughs> <laughs> the eagle's nest must be on top of this rock. So what are we waiting for? Start climbing. Yes. Uh, who, me? Sure. Remember telling us how you climbed the Matterhorn and Mount Everest? Uh, yes, but... Uh, so this little old 50-foot rock ought to be a sense. Of course. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, the uh, Society of Professional Mountain Climbers uh, forbids us members to climb anything under 20,000. <laughs> or stick your neck out one inch. Well, Benji, I guess it's up to you. Me? <laughs> But I'm no mountain climber. Oh, you'll do it for me, won't you, Benji Wenji? Uh -huh. Sure. Hang on, Benji. Don't look down. Huh? Oh. How do I get myself into this? Now that ain't nice. You should have had Benji wait for us. You ruffians have no right to follow us. Relax, fancy pants. We ain't gonna follow you no more. Oh? Nah, you're gonna be following us. <laughs> okay, Stretch, go find the next clue. I'm going! Yikes! Oh, no! Marker from the eagle's nest? Yeah, the dead tree we want to find is on the cliff overlooking Crescent Bay. <laughs> Crescent Bay, huh? We'll beat him there easy. There's the turkey. Once we get rid of this old tree, they'll never figure out how to find the treasure. <laughs> uh, I almost got it so off, Mike. <laughs> now look what you've done. Huh? Uh oh! Yeah! That turkey is some dumb turkey. Hey, look! There's Fancy Pants and the kid! Where? Down there! Right next to that dead tree sticking out of the cliff! Oh, no! We cut down the wrong tree! We did! Then they'll beat us to the treasure! No, they won't. Look! They're heading for the end of the bay! Bet you that's where the treasure is, in the old cave. Now you're cooking, Stretch. But they'll still beat us there. No, they won't. We're taking a shortcut across the bay. It's pretty rough out here, Spike. I, I don't feel so good. Oh, we need us. Some sailors you guys are. I'm going to check the engine. This old tub ain't going to get the best of me. Uh-oh, second thought. 
Now I know why they call this thing the sea dog. It makes you sick like a dog. I figure we're about halfway around the bay by now. We haven't heard the gang's motorcycles for a long time. Maybe we lost them. Not those clowns. They're up to something. Danger! Dynamiting at 3 o'clock! Hey, it's 2.30 already! We better split! Are you kidding, chicken brain? We got a half hour yet, and the cave's straight ahead. Come on! Dynamite all set? Yeah, ready to blast. Okay, we'll start clearing the area. Ah! Va, 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 boom! Dig the loot! Oh, yeah, dig the loot! Give me that. <laughs> They're all thousand dollar bills. There must be a million bucks in that trunk. A million bucks? Come on, let's load it on my bike and get out of here. Dynamiting at 3 o'clock. It's almost 3 now. Look, tire tracks. I knew those Yancey Street creeps were up to no good. They've beaten us to the treasure. And they must still be in the cave. Right. And we've got to warn them about the dynamite. Too late. They're probably trapped. Hurry. Gosh, I, I twisted my ankle. I'll catch up with you. Thing Ray, do your thing! No rest for the body beautiful. Wow, my ears are ringing. Are you guys okay? Uh, I think so. Just shook up. Oh, no. It looks like we're gone, is guys. We ain't going to ever dig our way out of this rock slide. We're too late. The whole mountain came down on the cave. Out of the way for a living legend. It's the thing. <laughs> Those guys in there need a lift. Splitting. Hey, look, it's the thing. Uh oh, let's move. Hey. Sprained ankle, huh? Very convenient. I think you can smell trouble, Benji. You're never around when something goes wrong. <laughs> You want change for a thousand-dollar bill? Yeah, ain't you ever seen one before? <laughs> Give me fives and ones. Just one moment, sir. Huh? This money is stolen. Hey, what are you, what are you kidding me? What are you doing? Hey, what's going on? We now know you're not the ones who held up our bank, thanks to your very good friends. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, very good friends. Yeah, thanks. So, since you found the stolen funds, you get the reward. A reward? Hey! And as president of the First City National Bank, I'm delighted to give it to you. Terrific! Oh, wow! Boy. <laughs> See, this certificate entitles the bearer to a luxurious one-week all-expense-paid ocean cruise on the Sea Dog. The, the Sea Dog! Gangway! Emergency! Our prisoner escaped! New Rebel Transport holds up to 42 action figures, each sold separately. Some assembly required. You'll never get me, Rebel Commander! You can't escape, Imperial TIE Fighter Pilot! Didn't find the lasers. Good. Backpacks and gas masks are safe. That means he's hiding in the escape hatch! You knew where I was! All this trick in the book. New Rebel Transport. Some assembly required. Action figures each sold separately from Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back Collection. Barbaric and humanoid tendril, devastating everything in his path.
The deadly inhumanoid tendril lashes out, and the forest comes alive as the redwoods help their scientist friends. Nasty redwoods! Inhumanoids! Inhumanoids! The evil that lies within us! Redline and other figures sold separately from Hasbro. Inhumanoids! Hey, I hope you still like the thing. Um... I do. I, you know what? I think they could bring back the thing, but bring back the actual Marvel Comics thing. You know, make it like a a uh, Disney Plus cartoon where each week, man, you have the the ever loving blue eyed thing teaming up. Actually, you just need to make a Marvel two in one TV series. That, that's all you need. We need a Marvel two in one series, and we have need a Marvel team up. And for those who don't know. Marvel Team Up was a was a comic book from the 70s into the 80s where Spider-Man teamed up with a new hero every week and they did a like one-off you know series but you know they could keep it going so every every episode he ran in or every episode every issue he ran into a new hero same thing happened with Marvel uh, 2 and 1 it was the thing and in every issue he would team up with a new hero which is really cool because they had a whole storyline going on in there, the Pegasus Project, that, and this part of the Serpent Crown was all through there, but yet still in each issue, new hero. So I always love that card. I love both that. So yeah, what we need a thing, cartoon series that's essentially Marvel two and one, not the, not the ones that they brought back over the years. No original old school style. Yeah, look it up, kids. Go, go, go Google it, look it up, go to your local comic book store, check it out, go find you some Marvel 2-in-1s, find you some Marvel team-ups, you won't be disappointed. So, we're going to another one of my favorite cartoons, and that is Galaxy Rangers. I love me some Galaxy Rangers. So... I don't know what else to say. Uh, I might be bringing you. I still, I'm still working on it. Maybe, maybe next week I'll bring in the uh, the uh, cowboy trio. I guess the old west trio of science fiction cartoons. Um, but this is episode seven, Wildfire. Enjoy. In 2086, two peaceful aliens journeyed to Earth, seeking our help. In return. They gave us the plans for our first hyperdrive, allowing mankind to open the doors to the stars. We have assembled a team of unique individuals to protect Earth and our allies. Courageous pioneers committed to the highest ideals of justice and dedicated to preserving law and order across the new frontier. These are the adventures of the Galaxy Rangers. This is Galaxy Ranger Zachary Fox reporting to Beta. We have just entered the Jawbone Mining Belt, 14.3 solar hours from Reno Colony 6. Our shipment of lithium-25 isotopes is in program stasis, secure and stable. And oh yes, Commander Walsh, your king is in check. Anxiously awaiting your next move, providing you have one. Fox out. Doc? Yo, I want an update on your lithium stasis program. Coming up, Chief. Program looks good. The explosives are stable. If we can stay out of trouble for a little while, we ought to get to Reno 6 in one piece. Captain, I'm picking up something moving our way. 
Considering its speed and trajectory, I think it could be a ship in trouble. Like I said, Goose, what do you make of it? It looks like a Type 9X rock hopper shuttlecraft. Zachary, I'm getting a Priority 3 distress signal. Crank up the audio. Mayday, Mayday, request emergency assistance, severe damage, wildfire. Wildfire? Who is Wildfire? Wildfire Carson is the wildest, wooliest desperado in the entire universe. Well, it looks as if Wildfire is about to have his flame put out for good. He's being chased by three Imperial death droids. an update on Cody Wildfire Carson. See if he's still wanted by every authority in the galaxy. Wanted or not, Captain, the man needs our help. I'm sorry, Goose, but if you attract those droids to our transport, you could set off the lithium isotopes. Why bother? They're coming right at us. That tears it. I'm on my way. Gooseman! I'm giving you an order, Ranger. Be careful. Alma, prime the drives. Sequence loaded and primed, Goose. Open bay door. Fire Carson, I presume. None other. Shall we take care of this nuisance? Why, I'd be much obliged. Elma, do it. My pleasure, Goose. Doc, what have you come up with on Carson? Cody Wildfire Carson. He's wanted for just about everything you can think of, including over 200 docking, port, and custom violations. But who would send Imperial death droids after him? I guess we'll find out soon enough. Goose is bringing him in now. Well, well, as I live and breathe, Zachary Fox. Oh, the last time I saw you, you were still at the Academy waiting to get your wings. I heard tell you went and had some bionic modifications since then. Tell me, Zach, old pal, how often do you have to change your oil? You know Wildfire Carson, Zachary? Yes, but it was never worth mentioning. By the way, Carson, you're under arrest. Start removing your gear. Right now. Now, Zach, before you start throwing the book at me, you ought to listen to what I have to say. And you'd better veer your ship off 24 degrees to the starboard. Since when do outlaws tell Galaxy Ranger captains how or where to steer their ships? Since you entered this here minefield, Captain Ranger Fox, sir. <laughs> Status. Hmm. Minor hull damage 
passage near the storage compartments. But our four navigational gyropods are severely damaged. We're as good as beached, Captain. Goose, remove this man's hardware and throw him in the brig. Somebody is going to have to pay dearly for banging up my Galaxy Ranger vessel and putting mines where they don't belong. Doc, what about the lithium isotopes? A few minutes, Captain. I don't think we have a few more minutes. Why is that? Take a look for yourself, Captain. My name is Virgil Garrett, Captain, and I own this patch of space. You and your Galaxy Rangers are trespassing where you ain't wanted. Are you the man responsible for mining this area? I'll make you a little deal. I'll answer one of your questions if you'll answer one of mine. Is Cody Carson aboard your ship? Cause if he is, you'd be right smart to give him to me now, before you force me to get unpleasant. Garrett, you're already unpleasant. The only thing I'll hand over to you is a warrant for your arrest. A few facts, Captain. Your ship is crippled and your deck is done run out of cards. I know you've got Carson, and I want him. You play along like a good little boy scout, and I might consider not turning you into space debris. Think about it, Captain. Why that... Goose, bring Carson back to the bridge. What's that noise? Bad news, Zachary. Our stasis program is rapidly decaying. I'm gonna have to go inside the system and find some way to divert the circuitry. Or we're going to explode within an hour. Do it, Doc. Goose, get Carson here, on the double. Carson's escaped the brig. Captain, I'm trying to track him. Captain, we just lost the gyropods completely. The slightest shift could send us directly into the minefield. But life support systems are unimpaired, and our offensive weaponry is sound. Wrong. In order for me to maintain our isotope stasis fields, I'm going to have to divert weapons and communication circuitry. There's no other way, Captain. Leaving us defenseless in the middle of this gang of cutthroats. That's one way of putting it. Do what you have to, Doc. I found Carson, Captain. He was down here in the hangar doing a waltz with Elma. Dang it, let go of me! You, sir, are a boob. Leaving so soon, Carson? They would have blasted you to quarks if you'd left the ship. And I'd have had that buggy hot wired if it weren't for that talking female eyeball. It wouldn't have done you any good, Carson, as you can see. Garrett, I knew he'd be along. Brought his gang too, I see. Captain, how nice of you to put Carson on display for me. It'll be a cold day on Sheruti before you get your hands on me, Garrett, you sidewinder. What's it gonna be, Captain? Are you gonna hand over Carson peaceably, or am I gonna have to turn you into subatomic particles? You'll have to give me more time to think about it, Garrett. Fifteen minutes, Captain. And if you haven't got Carson dressed up like a Christmas goose ready for carving, you can say goodbye to Jawbone the hard way. You are causing us a heap of trouble, Wildfire. Carson, what's this all about? Zack, I got me a map that spells out the richest piles of minerals and metals you ever heard of. And it's all right here in Jawbone, right under Garrett's nose. When Garrett found out I was filing a claim with the land office... He aimed to steal my map and put a stop to me. Garrett and his boys bushwhacked me, hit me with a tractor beam, and dragged me onto his ship. But I snuck into that rock hopper and skipped out past Garrett's robot guards. They thought they could put a stop to a wildfire with them space mines and a couple of droids. But I reckon I showed them. Well, they sure put a stop to us. 
Carson, you're making my decision easier all the time. Doc, how are the stasis fields holding up? Fine, Captain, but our weapons and radio are going to be out of commission until we get to Reno 6. Next time those cowborgs request a delivery, I hope it's kiwi fruit. Carson, you got us into this mess. Any idea how to get us out? Well, now that you mention it, Captain, I do have an idea or two. When I escaped Garrett's ship, I wrote down the access code. If we can get near that rush bucket, I can get us inside. Then all we have to do is get past Garrett's robot guards, and we'll have Garrett on a platter. Goose, when you searched this old bandit, did you find any paper? Just a weapons arsenal large enough to stock a small army, that's all. That's cause I kept it right here, close to my heart. Captain Zachary Ranger Fox, old pally. Goose, grab it! Oh, great. The way I see it, Ranger Fox Captain, if you don't take me along, there ain't gonna be no trip at all. What choice do we have? I say we go, Zachary. I don't see where we have much choice at all. I'll stay here and stall Garrett. You three, suit up. What do you mean, three? I'll need you, Doc, to get those space mines deactivated. You might also be able to lend a hand on taking out Garrett's robot defenses. Oh, swell. I reckon I'll be needing my gear, young fella. Standard ranger gear ought to be good enough for you, I reckon. Sorry, son, but I don't go anywhere without Betsy, my long rifle, and my two six poppers. I'll get them. Say, what was that you were saying earlier about Garrett's robot guards, Carson? Oh, no. Well, he's got your standard Artusian high-flex linebackers. Not more than a dozen or two. A dozen or two? And I can't see you fretting about them half-dozen Series 4 Mad Dog Skull Crushers. Skull Crushers? But, I tell you, there is one of them that does make me a tad nervous. Just a tad, you understand? Don't tell me. What's that, Carson? Well, Garrett went and got himself a one-of-a-kind, giant, black, chrome-plated, hydraulic, blitzkrieg mangler with a terrible temper. Makes a door, too. I told you not to tell me. Don't sweat it, Doc. If it gets too mean, we'll just feed it Cody. The indigestion will probably kill it. Very funny. Let's go. Captain, we're ready to jump. Good luck, Goose. And take care of Cody. I want him back here in one piece. Ten for and out. Come on, Doc. Like jumping off a log. Yeah, right. You got logs in your head, Goose Man. We'll try these vectors through Garrett's scout ships. Let's move out. Transmission from Garrett, Zachary. Put him on. Captain, I have just about run out of patience with you. I want Cody Carson, and I want him now. Before you start threatening me, Garrett, there's something you ought to know. We're carrying a shipment of lithium-25 isotopes. Your illegal mines have already caused us to jury-rig the stasis chamber. If you actually do decide to fire upon us, the explosion will be so enormous that there'll be nothing left of us Jawbone, your men, or you? You're bluffing. I never bluff. Not only that, Garrett, I've transmitted my coordinates to Beta, along with a transcript of your threats. If you should destroy us without destroying yourself, you'll be the most wanted man in the galaxy. I can't understand why you'd go stick your neck out for that bag of beans, Carson. Cody Carson is under the protective custody of the Galaxy Rangers, Garrett. I wouldn't expect you to understand what that means, but I would do the same for Cody or anybody else that comes under my protection, even you. Real nice of you to say it, Captain, but I'm giving you one last warning. If I don't have Carson in five minutes, those words will be your epitaph.
So far, so good. How about coming up with the access code now, Cody? Well, I'd like to, but come to think of it, I never did have no access code to begin with. Then how do you expect us to get in there? Same way I got out, like this. <laughs> You think Garrett hurt that? Well, if he didn't, his robot sure did. Doc, Doc. He could have been a contender. The bridge is up in that direction. You two head up that way while I cover you and draw the robot fire down to this side. Wait a minute, Cody. You're coming with us. Goose, Doc! Yes! Where's Cody? Beats me. Let's get to the bridge before we get buried alive in this scrap heap. Oh, 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 Bucky, old pal. I never thought I'd see your old hide again. Uh-oh. Oh, partners. Next time I want a haircut, I'll let you know. I don't know what you think you're up to, Captain, but I think you better say your prayers. Garrett, I wasn't lying about the lithium. Destroy this ship and you'll wipe out Jawbone and yourself. Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. <laughs> what? R.B. old gal. Great to see you again. Everything chip tape? Yes, we're all set, Cody. And let's ride! Don't move a muscle. Don't even twitch. It's all over for you, Garrett. Oh, yeah? Oh, no! The mango! My goose man! Zero! That's using the old squeeze play. Good work, team. Doc, send Beta a message. Inform them of our situation. You mean to tell me your communication was out all the time? I guess I forgot to tell you, but the isotopes were real. You almost wiped out this entire quadrant. Say, I don't see Carson anywhere. Where's he gone? Getting me back to the ship. And if I can ever do you all a favor, why, just yodel for old Wildfire. Just yodel it. A civilization dies. But its secrets are preserved in a mysterious place called the Hive. Now, good and evil sectors. Sector! Battle for those secrets. You control the monster Gnar, the giant destructible, the booby trapped bridge, the secret laboratory. All the defenses left by the agents in the mysterious Hive. Sectors by Coleco. Let's have a Play-Doh party! Yeah! yeah. Oh, a 
a shooting star. <laughs> you can have a Play-Doh party anytime with the Play-Doh Fun Factory. I made spaghetti. <laughs> Fire. Make a hose. No, it's a snake. I want your spaghetti. He got the spaghetti. By yourself or with the gang, you can have a Play-Doh party. It's fun. <laughs> the Play-Doh Fun Factory toy comes with everything you see here. Hope you guys are still liking Galaxy Rangers. I know I do. Uh, definitely got a soft spot right here. Uh, probably because I had to. I had to. I had to seek this cartoon out. I, I I lucked into watching like a few episodes, and then I had to legitimately record it in Indiana and get it sent to me in Ohio um, because we didn't have it here. Uh, so th this is what, like I said, this is one I definitely, and, and so I didn't get to watch it in repeats and stuff like that. Like I got to see GI Joe and Transformers and He-Man and, and Brave Star and all that stuff. Um, because it just wasn't on. So legitimately the only time I got to watch it was when I got a VHS tape. So, you know, I, I, it's, it's, there, there's a few, very few cartoons that I had to go find as a kid and this is one i had to go find uh so i hope you guys enjoyed galaxy rangers so here we go i know you guys some of you guys said it's and it, it just does make sense pink panthers and sons and uh somebody pointed out to me last week sorry if i can't remember who it was i apologize uh but we got you know captain caveman and son uh we got you know, of course, Pink Panther's son. We got Popeye and son. We got a lot of and sons back in the 80s. Because uh, they, they really wanted to bring back old franchises. And so they figured, you know what? We went the other way. So we had the Muppet Babies. We had a pup named Scooby-Doo. We had uh, the Flintstone Kids. Uh, we had Tom and Jerry Kids. Uh, so why don't we go the other way? Because uh, then we had Tom and Jerry, because you had Tom and Jerry running around with Tom Jerry running around with his son. Um, but they, they started teaming up with their kids. A lot of that. So, Pink Panther was no no different. And uh, yet, this is a very 80s cartoon, man. Uh, look, at, look at the punks in this. I mean, literally, the, the bad pan, uh, Panthers are punks. So, here you guys go. This is Pink Panthers and Sons. This is Panky's Pet and Pink Encounters of the Panky Kind. That was another one they did of whatever kind. They did a lot of episodes of those like that back in the 80s. So here you guys go. Pink Panthers and Sons. Enjoy. We now return to the Pink Panther and Sons. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now anchored at the unspoiled tropical island paradise of Lava Loa, so you may enjoy a day on its beautiful beaches. Gee, Dad, this South Sea cruise was a great idea, especially with all our Rainbow Panther friends and their folks along. Oh, Mother, isn't this island impressive with its overwhelming abundance of luxuriant vegetation? Yes, dear, I'm in total agreement with your exuberance and enthusiasm for the exquisitely exotic tropical flora. What is this, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Enjoy yourselves, and don't forget our luau lunch at noon. Oh, boy, I like luau. Who can wait for lunch? We need a little slack. A little snake. A little snack. Just don't spill. Er, spell. Uh, spoil your appetite, son. Later, Dad. We're going to find our own private beach. Correct, Mother. But we have every expectation of returning at the designated hour for the afternoon sumptuous repast. That's right, Pup. We'll be back by the 12th round. Uh, 12 o'clock. Thanks for the solar-powered sand shovel, Dad. And Lava Loa Island remains basically the same as it did 50 million years ago, when dinosaurs ruled unchallenged. Well, I'm the same as I was 15 minutes ago. Pink. How about some more tanning lotion, Panky? Okay. Sometimes you squeeze me the wrong way, little brother. Mm, mm, look what I found. Yeah, if you listen close, you can see the ear. Uh, uh, hear the sea. Hey, we don't know where you're coming from. Wow, you not only hear the sea, you feel it too. This is a 
fortuitous opportunity to probe the atoll's interior for fossil specimens. No kidding! That's terrific, Chetta. Just make sure you keep an eye on the little guy. That goes without saying, Pinky. The initial points of inquiry are sandstone formations dating from the Paleolithic era. Isn't that particularly fascinating, Pinky? The various striations indicate an extensive substrata of... Look! How odd! I didn't know he could 
could swim? <laughs> oh, good! The unfortunate reptile appears to be making a wonderfully rapid recovery! Yeah, he's back in top shape! But still on our tail! You know, I never thought Panky would let anyone come between us. <laughs> Finally, they're both asleep. Come on. Now's our chance to sneak off to the big luau lunch. Wow! That's easy for you to say, Murphle. Oh, this is some layaway. Uh, lay out. Uh, lay out. What'll it be, kiddo? Pineapple? Coconut? Papaya? Uh-oh. Mr. Super Appetite is back. <laughs> Enjoy the magnificent luau buff. Hey! Who's responsible for this? A little lizard ate the luau, eh? Ha! Do you expect me to believe that? Certainly! Because despite the incriminating situation, that ravenous reptile is the actual culprit. Yeah! The guy's got a real knockout munch! <laughs> he must be around here somewhere, Dad. Maybe he had to eat and run. I hope you know your parents will have to pay for all this. Now back to the ship. Yeah, there goes our allowance. Forget the allowance. Where's Panky? You hide here. Panky! They went this way. In here, Panthers. Panky! Wish I could say pleased to meet you, ma'am, but we were just leaving. See? This confirms my initial hypothesis. He's a contemporary prehistoric dinosaur. I just wish I could have studied him further. Where are those kids? Well, what kept you? Another lizard? You know, Captain, you never believe us in a million years. Or 50 million, for that matter. Bye-bye! We now return to the Pink Panther and Son. Looking good, Panthers. We'll have our old clubhouse fixed up in no time. Yeah! Superstition of the inferior dedication! Keep feeding my non-stop shingle flinger and we'll have a super room. Super quick! I've got a round of heavyweight sandwiches that'll feed everybody. if we can have a sleep out. Yeah, sleep out. Oh, Pinky, I just love your renovations. Why don't you ask me over sometime? Forget it, Leona. Our clubhouse is for Rainbow Panthers only. Sorry. So am I. Open up. I'm not accustomed to waiting for inferiors. Sorry, Finko. Come on in. I don't make doorknobs like they used to. Or doors, neither. Sorry, Finko. I've been meaning to have that fixed. 
You should see the Rainbow Panthers Clubhouse. It's gorgeous. But, Leona, this is our home. The place we hang our hats. Of course, there's always room for improvement. I've had it with this place. I'm gonna join the Panthers. Good idea. We'll all go. We're gonna join the Panthers? Nah, you bright brain. We're gonna check out the clubhouse. I hope we've all acquired the proper apparatus for overnight accommodations. I think she means did everyone bring a sleeping bag? I brought a punching bag. Ten rounds and I'm out. Out, out, out! But this is our clubhouse, Finko. Wrong! It's now the official Howl's Angels Clubhouse. Yeah, you Panthers did such a nice job fixing it up, we decided to move in. <laughs> I decided to move in. I can take care of these guys in one round. <laughs> After a couple weeks training, of course. What we need is a quick strategy meeting, gang. First, we better find a dry meeting place. Perhaps the selection of this dismal habitation was an inappropriate choice, Pee-Pee. Well, you know what they say, gang. Any clubhouse in a storm. Yeah, things have got to look better in the morning. I hope. We'll find out what makes Earthlings tick. <gasps> he does not tick, Nika. Then we must keep him for further observation, Zeta. In the meantime, we will create a perfect robot duplicate to prevent his fellow Earthlings from becoming alarmed. Panthers, rise and shine. We've got some strategy to plan. Up and at him, Panky. Zipper, the sleeping bag sucks. Oh, I must have loosened it up for him. Yeah, Murple, I can't wait to try this new Bafo Pop cereal either. Says here it's full of vitamins and minerals to make you real strong. Easy, Panky. Don't eat the whole box. Yeah, Murfo, we're lucky you brought another box. Forget breakfast, gang. We can eat later. Our big problem is getting the Howl's Angels out of our clubhouse. Right! But how do we KO those skunks? That's it, Rocco! It is? <laughs> now this is what I call a great clubhouse warming party, Howl! Yeah, it's fun messing up a nice place for a change. It's time for your latest invention, Annie. Wait till those skunks inside see this one. Oh, a skunk! Yeah! Put me out of here! Skunks are phony! Nice try, Panthers! But if you want us out of here, you'll have to throw us out! Okay. <laughs> I guess I told them off! Panky! Uh, come back here! Yay! Whoa. I'm totally baffled by your sibling's atypical behavior! I think she means what's come over Panky. He's never acted like this before. Maybe it was all those Bafo Pops he ate. Hey, lighten up, kid. I was just leaving anyway. 
<laughs> yeah, Pinky. Uh, calm down and let her go. Uh, thanks. Oh, you're so strong. Just like your baby brother. Listen up, Finko. You have exactly five minutes to move out, or Pinky is moving in. Now we'll find out what makes Earthling tick. He does not tick. <laughs> that tickles. <laughs> Now he is picking. No, he is escaping. <laughs> Do not touch that. It is the anti gravity switch. <laughs> emergency, emergency. Now Earthling is activating the solar fire extinguisher. And the omnidirectional stabilizer. Urgent, urgent. This creature must be returned to Earth before he destroys our ship. I know, I know. I'm setting course for Creature's Planet. <laughs> Time's up, Finko. Here comes Panky. There's no way anybody fit through that door. going. Panky, wait up! Bye-bye! Bye-bye. Now we'll never know what makes Earthlings tick. Thank goodness! If, if you're through jogging, Panky, I'd like to get back to the clubhouse. Oh, no! It's him! Please, Pinky, keep the cat away from us. Yeah, please. Okay, on one condition. Well, how'd we do? It would appear you've properly restored our clubhouse to pristine condition. But never darken our footstep or a doorstop. Step again. Don't worry, not with him around. Oh, man. I gotta hand it to you, Pinky. You are out of this world. Yeah, I was. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm playing Rock and Chase, a video game cartridge you have to buy separately to play on the Intellivision video game system. Why are you talking like that? They always do. Then they say your parents have to hook it up to the TV. After that, you can start to pick up gold. Trouble is, the police are coming, so you have to keep both eyes on the game. Oh, brother. Do they say that too? Funny. Intellivision Master Component from Mattel Electronics. Lock and Chase video game cartridge sold separately. Okay, this is Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Video game cartridge. You have to buy it separately to play on the Intellivision video game system. Mom and Dad have to hook it up to the TV. What next? You're trying to find a crown, but it's real easy to get lost. So don't be surprised if the dragon finds you first. Holy cats, you just killed the dragon. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons video game cartridge and Intellivision Master Component from Mattel Electronics, each sold separately. Poor little clown puppies, they had no one to love them. Pound puppy, you were sad and lonely. Watch your home, now you're my one and only. Pound puppy, you're my one and only puppy love. Pound puppies are so cuddly soft, they feel real. Each sold separately. You can name them. Fetch Coco. And for a few dollars more, send for a name tag, stickers, and owner's certificate. Pound puppy, you're my one and only puppy love. From Tonka. I hope you guys liked Pink Panther and Sons. Um, I don't know. It, it's kind of a, a cute because it's always those life meaning episodes. You know they love doing that. 
uh, back in the day because they always had to have a, a, a learning lesson and that's what they did they gave you a lesson that they, uh, you know all right here we go I'm gonna throw these in here at the end hopefully we can get these past the YouTube bots I'm sure they are because this one this one's just bad I I, I didn't I had no intention of, of putting this on here but I had to down I downloaded it and I watched it so unfortunately since I had to watch it you now have to watch it too because the animation is horrible the voice acting is horrible the everything about this cartoon is not good and the fact that it came from Hanna-Barbera at a time when Hanna-Barbera was like the king of Saturday morning cartoons is just tragic uh, this is Foofer. That's right, Foofer. Um, this, I apologize. Like I said, this, this, this is, I feel like I need to let you guys know that, that, like other shows like Rickety Rocket, just because it came out when we were kids, does not mean it's any good. And, uh, this is probably the one and only time you will ever see an episode of Foofer on here. Um, and this is Foofer episode one, The Clean Sweep. And uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I have to make you guys watch this just because I got stuck watching it to bring it to you. Because I don't remember. I don't remember this cartoon. I, I it was on when I was watching cartoons, definitely. Um, so I hope maybe maybe it was so bad that I blocked it out. But here you guys go. Just watch it. I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe you can see how bad it is. Here you guys go. Foofer episode one. The clean sweep. Try to enjoy, I guess. He's a dog who knows the right thing to do. He's Foofer. He's the finest dog that I ever knew. He's Foofer. He's as sturdy as a wall. He will catch you if you fall. He is Foofer. He's a dog who knows the right thing to say. He's Foofer. He's the one dog that you cannot display. He's Foofer. He's the greatest of them all. He makes other dogs look small. He is Foofer. Never seem to go their way Cause he's the smartest dog in town He is full fun He is full fun He is full No use, Hazel, darling. My eyes will not go to sleep. Oh, poor Fritz Carlos, you're so tired. <gasps> Try cunning sheep or something, dear. One fantastic, oh, two fantastic, three, 1048. Hazel, my little dog, three, darling, you are the most fantastic of all. Mwah. Your beautiful hair! It cannot be! I am bald! No! 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 Oh! Another nightmare! It's keeping my eyes wide awake! No! I will watch the late night movies downstairs! Stretching my ear out of shape, Rocky girl. There's cowboys and Indians and horses downstairs. No, someone just left the boob tube on all night. Let's uh, go shut it off. Hey, watch it with the feet, Chucky. 
Countdown, brothers. Three, <laughs> two, uh, one. Blast off! <laughs> Weird. Who'd be gargling this time of night? What's with all the racket out here, huh? Oh, Foofer, help, help! Fritz Carlos is missing! No, he's not! Look! Why is he watching TV now? Friends, does your doggy have problems? Is he having problems sleeping? Dr. Pavlov can help. He's every puppy's pal. Oh, my poor, poor Fritz Carlos. He hasn't slept for over a week. Something heavy must be bugging the little dude. Maybe that TV dog doctor can help. We'll never get to sleep with that TV blaring every night. Hey, 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 I hear you, troops. I'll uh, think of something in the morning. Is Fritz Carlos gonna hog all the hot water, foofer? Well, I thought a warm shower would relax him, you know. I am telling you this from the tip of my toes. You are simply fun. You are fun. Oh, forget it. Face it, darling. You are a wreck. Feeling sleepy yet, Fritz, my man? Foofer, how can I sleep when all my fantastic hair is falling out? I counted 13 hairs in this sink today. 13? Is that all that's bugging you, my man? It's more than a bug. It's my hair. Without it, Fritz Carlos is nothing, no. <gasps> Promise me, Fofo, darling. This is our little secret, yes? <gasps> oh, no! Hi! Oh, you poor thing. Say, being bald might make you look bad, uh-huh. You could always wear a hat, you know. Hey, now, don't throw in the towel, Fritz, my man. Oh, never, darling. That's where I'm storing my hair. Hey, the foof's got it. We'll get help from where the professionals go. You mean the TV dog doctor? No, the beauty parlor. I found an open window. Let's party. Oh, this here feels great, don't it, Fencer? Oh, wee! Lewis, you gotta check out the fluff dry cycle. Honestly, Fitz Carlos, I don't care if you lose a little hair. I, I must look my best for you and the others, Hazel, darling. Well, after a new do and trim, you'll be a knockout, Fritzy. Oh, is it? Oh, uh, 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 still. Uh, just, just a little off the sides, darling. Don't move so, uh, uh, much. Did anyone else hear a strange zip noise? Oh, oh no. <gasps> Not my incredibly fantastic curly mustaches. No. I, I, I'm so sorry. Oh, please. Are you all right, dear? Yeah, speak to us, Fritz Carlos. No, darlings. Without his mustache, Fritz Carlos is gone. Forever. Why, Pepe, you're obeying perfectly this morning. How's Fritz Carlos doing this morning, Hazel? I surrender the deal. I must have Oh, he won't snap out of it, Foofer. He just sits there like a blob. No, that couldn't be that pipsqueak Pepe. Aha! I am back when you least expect me. Surrender! Well, it looks like I caught myself a tadpole. <laughs> Mommy's getting in a bad mood. Sorry, gotta toss you back, squirt. <laughs> you have a serious problem. You are walking at absolutely nothing. I'm taking you right to that TV dog doctor, Dr. Pavlov. Now, he will feed you. 
That gives me an idea. Maybe that doctor can make Fritz Carlo's hair grow back. That's what I've been saying all along. Yep, we hit the jackpot, troops. This is the same dude we saw on the tube. What exactly are we looking for, noble leader? I haven't a clue, Fencer. Whatever Dr. Pavlov uses to cure dogs with. Bring Pepe right into my office, Mrs. Escrow. Why, thank you, Dr. Pavlov. Well, time's up, troops. Scatter! <laughs> your mommy tells me you're very nervous, Pepe. I want to be your puppy pal. Good, and I like you, too. Can you get cured, Doctor? Madam, I have never failed yet. Now, Pepe, I want you to relax. Just watch the doggy bone. What's he doing, Foofer? Dr. Pavlov has a magic charm, and we've got to get it for Fritz Carlo's hair. Santa Claus, that I'm Oh, I think he's relaxing, Mrs. Escrow. <laughs> And now, let's see what makes Pepe so nervous, shall we? Pepe, that's a doggy no-no. Someone's got to catch that magic charm. Oh. Oh. Stop, stop, that's a valuable medical tool. <laughs> useless, Foofar. My hair isn't growing back. No sweat, Fritzy. The Foof always has a backup plan. Seeing the doctor's phony hairpiece was inspirational, so we scored you that fake mustache down at the novelty shop. I don't know what to say, Foofar. But that's not all we got. Hi! We wanted you to feel at home with your new mustache. Do we look bad or what? Yeah, and forget about wearing a hat, Fritz Carlos. I still think he looks... Sorry, well, sorry, I kind of like this set with this set. I mean, he hasn't changed. After all you've done. Who cares about hair and mustaches, darlings? Oh, Fritz Carlos, you've snapped out of it. My friends, I salute you. Fritz Carlos has returned. And can we tell you this? You look simply... kitchen floor, so wipe your paws when you go in. Oh, why don't you relax and kick back? Ah, uh, believe me, after this last errand, I plan to. <laughs> Look, Uncle Foofer, Fencer is waving to us. <laughs> One side, baby, me first. Relax. the mayor of Trouble City. No, no, stay! He'll stop! Hmm, looks like...
looks like a bunch of humans live here. Ooh, Hazel's gonna blow a gasket when she sees this. Too late, Foofer. She's back. And the kitchen looks worse. You've wrecked my clean house in just five minutes. Hazel, darling, your hair looks fantastic today. Don't butter me up, Fritz Carlos. It was a nice try, no? I always clean up and none of you ever help me. Have you seen my dog eat dish, Hazel? See, you're like a bunch of helpless puppies. <coughs> that does it. If you like the house looking like this, fine. I quit. Oh, now, no. wait a minute. No. 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 Hey, we've got company troops. You should never allow your dog in the car, Mrs. Escrow. They're such dirty things. <laughs> Not my precious little Peppy, Mrs. Collins. Shall we see the house now? Red alert, troops. Hide! Well, the outside is as clean as you promised, Mrs. Escrow. Like I've always said, neatness counts. <laughs> But you haven't seen anything until you look inside. Surprise, Mrs. Collins! <gasps> wow! <gasps> wow! My beautiful house! I want to buy a house, Mrs. Escrow, not a garbage dump. But you haven't seen the backyard yet! Please wait! Let me explain! My dear, if I were you, I'd hire myself a good house cleaning service. Ha! Huh. Hmm. I wonder where I can get a real cheap cleaning service. Troops, we gotta help Hazel clean up. Oh, come oh, on. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Do it. As you all know, cleaning is serious business. No funny stuff, Fooper. Lewis, turn Annabelle around. Hazel, you are commandingly fantastic, and I double salute you. Straighten up, Fencer. 10-4, Admiral. Over and out. You all have your assignments? Yes, Hazel. Then forward, clean. dragged out. That Hazel is a slave driver. I'm telling you, darlings, Hazel is fantastic, but something must be done. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right on. Well, at least we're finished for the day, troops. Everybody up! That's one floor cleaned, two more to go. Oh, Uh-oh, we got trouble below. It's Mel and Harvey, the dog catchers. <gasps> Just look at the size of this place, Harvey. We better be getting top bucks for this cleaning gimmick of yours. What's well, better than nothing, Mel? We ain't making a dime, dog catch. Ooh, whoa, Mel! On your feet, Twinkle Toes. Would you look at this place, Mel? Why would she hire us to clean a perfectly clean joint? <laughs> Do I care? It's easy money and the best idea I ever had. Why, you two are simply amazing. Just look how fast you cleaned up. Look, lady, we didn't do... The clean team aims to please, Mrs. Escrow. I want to hire you permanently. You'll come clean every week. No way we can hire from those two forever, Fufa. Uh-oh, we're slipping, troops. Someone's hiding in the closet. Mel, there's a mutt loose in here. Get him, Harp. He's probably worth a buck or two. No, no, stop, stop. All right, you freeloaders, give yourselves up. <sighs> Is this a dog or a rug rat, Harvey? <laughs> He's my baby. Hand him over. You may be excellent house cleaners, but you don't know anything about dogs. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Didn't mean it. 
Well, no harm done. See you next week. Ow! What's that for, Mel? You almost got us fired. That's what for. Me? <sighs> Papers here. Oh, shoot. Oh, you stink. Well, you stink. Well, I mean, well, uh, you smell, Lewis. I had to dig through five garbage cans to find today's edition. Um, uh, good, good morning, everyone. Looking for the funnies, Lewis? We gotta find a new house, don't we, Miss Spick and Span? We were so bad cleaning up, Mel and Harvey have a job for life. Hazel, my neat freak, darling, you're still fantastic. <clears throat> can, uh, can I say something? Uh, want us to mop the roof now? Or how about scrubbing the sidewalk? Cool it, Fencer. No, no, Foofer, he's right. I like a clean house, but I was bossy. I'm sorry. Well, well, looky here. Here's an ad for our house. Mrs. Escrow is bringing a busload of buyers over here this afternoon. Does that give anyone any idea? I've got one, Foofer. We can get rid of Mel and Harvey and all those buyers at once. Wow! Oh. We'll mess everything up again. <laughs> <laughs> Hazel, that's good enough to be one of my ideas. Didn't I tell you this little lady was brilliantly fantastic? Mwah, mwah, mwah. Yes, no? Yes. Yay! Oh, oh my, oh dear, oh dear me. Uh, 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 what was that? Did, uh, did, did you hear that? Someone's in the living room. The place still looks great, no? The clean teams hit the big time, Harvey. Got our new business cards ready for Mrs. Escrow's tour? Check, no. Then we'll get some shut-eye uh, until they arrive. <laughs> Shoot, this makes my plan impossible. Not impossible, Hazel, just quieter. <laughs> Terrific, Annabelle. You're pretty hip. Terrific job, troops. A masterpiece. Fantastico. That's the bus. Let's split. I'm certain this house will sell very quickly. Does anyone want to start the bidding? working perfectly, Hazel. Huh? What? Oh, are you, Mrs. Escrow? Get out! You're fired! Oh, oh that's my right. I told you this crazy gimmick wouldn't work, Harvey. You said it was your idea. Me? Never. So it's settled, Hazel. We'll help you with the house cleaning. And I promise not to nag everyone as much. Deal? Oh, deal. deal. But how long before we can move back inside, Uncle Fufa? Oh, no can tell, Rocky girl. By the time Mrs. Escrow finishes redecorating... No, Peppy! Bad boy! Bad boy! Ow! You might be grown up with a niece of your own. Betty Crocker Easy Bake Mini Wave Oven. Preheat 15 minutes, light bulb not included. You can mix up a yellow and a chocolate cake. You can have lots of fun with an Easy Bake. In just 10 minutes, it's done just right. To frost, share, taste, bite. The Betty Crocker Easy Bake Mini Wave Oven with Betty Crocker Mixes from Kenner. Cars, cars with the key to speed. From the 
Diamond Keycard Collection. Each sold separately. We make them look flashy, but you make them run fast. The key to speed fast. Fast. The key to speed fast. Burning key cards. Cars with the key to speed fast. Burning key cards. Each sold separately with a keychain from Kidco. I apologize again, again, and I did this on purpose, and I'm sorry, I shouldn't, but I feel like it needs to be out there, so, but here you guys go, now the foofer is gone, now we're bringing you the pound puppies, not the new ones, because they rebooted it again, which is just weird to watch, um, and the fact that we got a cartoon out of the actual pound puppies toys, which were just dogs and now the pound puppies like have personalities and jackets and wigs and stuff uh, and stuff like that excuse me hmm. um definitely definitely odd choice but it was hot pound puppies were huge back then and so they need to market them and bring out this cartoon so this is pound puppies episode one bright eyes come home it's the Pound Puppies! Here's Cooler, Whopper, Nose Marie, Bright Eyes, and Howler! the meeting of Alley Cats Anonymous? Cooler! Oh, and I see you've started the festivities without me. Rats! I miss all the fun! <laughs> oh, uh, really, Bright Eyes and I would just love to stay and party with you kitties, except, uh, hey, we're allergic to catnip! <laughs> Ciao for now! But let's do lunch real soon, okay? <laughs> Thanks, Cooler. You saved my life. <laughs> anytime, Bright Eyes, anytime. But just tell me one thing. Where have you been? We've been looking everywhere for you. I'm sorry, Cooler. I've just been out wandering around, hoping to find myself a home. I sure wish somebody would adopt me. And as fearless leader of the Pound Puppies, it's my sworn duty to help this pup get adopted into a hap hap happy home. <laughs> Cooler, you're a kook. And so the heroic kook carries the fair damsel dog in distress back to the Puppy Pound, where a big surprise is awaiting her. She may find a new home yet, because today people from all over are coming to the Pound to adopt Pound Puppies. Oh. Bright eyes! I knew you'd make it back for the big day! <laughs> what day is it, Howler? It's Arbor Day. No, no, it's Labor Day. No, or is it Groundhog's Day? Or it's, uh, it's, it's, oh, it's Adoption Day! This is it, Adoption Day! Yeah! All right! I can't wait! Oh boy, Adoption Day! This could be my big chance! Do you think I'll get adopted, Nose Marie? Do ya? It's a possibility, Bright Eyes, honey. That's why, on Adoption Day, it's important for all of us pups to look our little old best. Of course, for me, looking my best comes naturally. <laughs> you know, Bright Eyes, I've been adopted lots of times. Honest and truly, Whopper? Sure. Once, I was adopted by a man, a, a spaceman. Yeah, he was a man in the moon, and he had a big house, or a mansion. 
Yeah, make that a yacht. So we sailed around the world to Milwaukee. To Miami. No, no, to the moon. Right. Whopper, I do believe you and your little old story are all wet. <laughs> You know, Holly, not only are you the only human I know who can talk to dogs, but you also give the greatest belly rubs on Earth. Oh, yeah! <laughs> I'm so glad you brought Bright Eyes back to the pound safe and sound. Oh! Uh-oh, sounds like trouble. Oh, oh. Run for your lives! It's coming this way! What is it, Howler? It's hideous. It's monstrous. It's the worst thing in the whole wide world. It's, uh, it's, uh, oh, oh, oh. it's Katrina Stoneheart. My loving guardian. Along with her spoiled, rotten daughter, Bratina, and her pet, Catgut. Auntie Katrina, what an, an unexpected surprise. And we've brought an unexpected surprise for you, sweet Holly. Your pound's electric bill. Nah, nah, read it and weep. I owe $200 for electricity? How can that be? Oh, I must have left the lights on in the tunnel again. You do have enough money, don't you, Holly? Well, not at the moment. Nah, nah, Holly's broke. Nah, nah, she's a joke. You'll see, Bertina. Today's adoption day. When people adopt puppies, they usually make donations. You'd better hope they make large donations, dear, because if you don't pay that bill, the pound will be shut down. Yeah, yeah, shut it down. Bye-bye, puppy pound. And the property will automatically be turned over to me. I'll have the money by tonight, Auntie Katrina. Don't bet on it, Holly. Once my little plan is complete, you can kiss your sweet puppy pound goodbye. <laughs> That's right, folks. Gather round, one and all, because it's time for the great pound puppy adoption extravaganza. Maestro, a drum roll, please. Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on what's behind the curtain. <laughs> are ready to be adopted. So step right up and make a little puppy's dream come true. Oh, so who wants to get adopted anyway? Well, guys, it looks like the donations will pay for the electric bill. But what about poor little old pitiful bright eyes? Let's face it, I'll never find a home of my own. Hey, bright eyes, come on, dry those baby blue eyes. A day will come, and when it does, this is what we'll all be singing. Goodbye, bright eyes. Hey! Goodbye, bright eyes. Yeah! Goodbye from all us guys, we hate to see you go. Oh, yeah! yeah. Friends, allow me to introduce myself. Samuel Quentin, famous Hollywood director. My card? I'm searching for a dog, a very special dog. A dog who will star in my next major Hollywood production. Say... What about that pup over there? What grace! What emotion! What an actress! But Bright Eyes isn't acting. She's crying because she's sad. Well, she won't be sad for long, because I'm going to make her a star. Hey, Bright Eyes, don't look now, but you've just been adopted. Really? Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> well, gang, I guess this is it. Goodbye, Howler. I hate goodbyes. They make me very emotional. And when I get emotional, I can't, I can't, I can't control my, my, my howling. Oh, now don't forget, sugar. Send me all the gossip from Hollywood. Okay? You bet, Nosemary. 
and give my regards to, to Godzilla. Yeah, he's a, a close personal friend of mine. I will, Whopper. In the bright eyes, if you run into those alley cats again, you know where to find me, right? Right, Cooler. You know, it's funny. I always thought leaving here would be the happiest moment of my life. <laughs> but leaving you guys makes it the saddest. <laughs> oh. I surely hope everything works out fine for Bright Eyes. <laughs> Me too, Nose Marie. But I have a funny feeling that something bad is about to happen. <laughs> Would I tell you? Good evening, Holly, dear. How did adoption day go? Very well, Auntie Katrina. Did you make enough money to pay your electric bill? Ha, did you? Ha, ha, did you? As a matter of fact, Fortina, we made more than enough. Take a look for yourself. What? The money, it's gone! <gasps> it's not here. The money's gone! Oh, that's too, too bad, Holly. Now, what are you going to do? I, I don't know. Well, you'd better think of something, dear. Because if that bill isn't paid in one week, I'm afraid you'll lose the pound to me. Land sakes, Cooler, whatever shall we do? Why, if we don't come up with that money in a little old week, they'll close down the pound. Alas and alack, we'll all be homeless. But, Nose Marie, we already are homeless. That's why we live in the pound. Oh, well then, never mind. Hey, hey, listen, guys, don't worry about a thing. I know this rich guy who can just give us the cash. Oh, yeah? Who? He, he's the president. Uh, no, no, the king. No, wait, he's the emperor of Mars. Yeah, yeah, he rules the entire planet, and he's really, really rich. In, in fact, he's the richest uh, Martian who ever lived. Also, he's my very best friend in the whole wide world. Well, one time he gave me a hundred, uh, a, a thousand, uh, a million, a per billion dollars. And I became the wealthiest dog in the whole universe. But I squandered my fortune on dog biscuits. I hate to burst your bubble whopper, but I think you're yanking our tails again. But I do know someone who's rich cooler. That big Hollywood director who adopted Bright Eyes. Whopper, you zany nut! You're a genius! I am? Absolutely! That director is loaded, and Bright Eyes is gonna be his next big star! She can get the money for us! That's where Howler comes in! Who? Oh, me? Uh, why? What, where? What, when? How? how? Exactly! We need your Howler to send a long-distance Howlergram! To Samuel Quentin, famous movie director. Oh. Hollywood, California. Oh, 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 oh. Dear Bright Eyes, how goes stardom? Are you rich yet? We hope so, because we need moolah and pronto, or they'll close down the pound. Please send us cash as soon as possible. Your old pal, Cooler. Samuel Quentin. What do they say? No trace of Samuel Quentin in Hollywood. In fact, they've never heard of him. I do declare. But if he didn't go back to Hollywood, then where'd he take Bright Eyes? Maybe he's shooting his next movie in some exotic location. Like London, or Paris, or maybe even Milwaukee! Milwaukee, Milwaukee, everybody talking about Milwaukee, Milwaukee. Whopper, this is no time for Whistling Dixie. We have to find Bright Eyes. Now, Bright Eyes, this is where we'll be shooting our first scene. Just take a look at that gorgeous set and remember where the cameras are. They'll be following your every move, you little actress, you. <laughs> Now, in this first scene, you'll be getting ready for the costume ball. So you'll go into your boudoir and dress up like Cleopatra, covering yourself with jewels. Understand, sweetie? All right, then. Roll camera. Ready? And action. Yes, 
Yes, now make your grand exit. Cut, rent, perfect. We've hit the big time, Bright Eyes. A star is born. Fortune and gems. Say, that dog looks a lot like Bright Eyes. <laughs> Wild, huh? <laughs> mm. Here comes Auntie Katrina back from the store. Bertina, Cat Got, I'm home. Hi, Mommy Dearest. Some guy named Sammy Quentin called to say hello. Sammy Quentin? The famous Hollywood director? Sammy Quentin. Oh, yes. He's that clown I hired to pay a visit to the pound. Uh-oh. That's the dude who adopted Bright Eyes. Yes, thanks to good old Sammy Quentin, Holly is never going to pay her electrical bill, and that pound will be all mine. <laughs> all mine! That's where the money from Adoption Day went. Trina said Sammy Quentin here to snatch it. And now Sammy's leading Bright Eyes into a life of crime. She always takes such a nice picture, though, doesn't she? But we've got to do something to help her. Something daring, something courageous, uh, something... Uh, wacko. That's the spirit howler. Pound puppies, let's start pounding! Bark and Growl Cafe. Okay, let's move out. B but who or who? Uh, what? what when, where? Where? Uh, how? Uh, uh, why are we going in there? Because this is where all the tough dogs in town hang out. That's the reason not to go in there. Yeah, but if anyone can tell us where to find a crook like Sam Quentin, these mutts can. You wacky mutts! <laughs> what's shaking? <laughs> oh, my knees, that's what's shaking. Pound puppies, have no fear! Wonder Whopper will protect you! But first, Wonder Whopper must make an emergency trip to uh, Venus! So long! <laughs> Sweetheart, sugar plum. What are we gonna do? Hey, Nose Marie, come on, trust me. <laughs> I'll get us out of this, no problem. <laughs> Did I say no problem? Before we play kick the can with your fuzzy little hides, does he have any last requests? Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do have one request. Let's do the twist! Hey, <laughs> <laughs> you guys are all right. Hey, but tell me something. What are nice little puppy doggies like you doing in the crummy joint like this? We're looking for a shady character named Sam Quentin. Do you know him? You mean Quick Fingers Quentin? Yeah, we know him. We'd all like to see him get his. Yeah. 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 Our sentiments exact the mundo. So do you have any idea where we can find this Quentin fella? Hey, for you fancy dancers here, yeah, I'll have the boys sniff him down on the double. Yeah. That's Quentin's hideout, all right. <laughs> yeah, I'd know his rotten sin anywhere. Here comes our big fish. He's taking the bait. Mission Bright Eyes is underway. <laughs> <laughs> We don't want to disturb the great Hollywood director. Yeah, so tell us, kid, what's it like being a famous actress? 
Oh, it's so boring. All I do is sit around all day waiting for my next scene to be shot. Well, your last performance got rave reviews, darling. It was in just all the papers. Dog steals fortune and gems. Oh, oh no. Oh, what have I done? Upsetting, isn't it? I'll say. This picture could ruin my career. Well, that settles it. I'm retiring from show business. Not quite yet, Bright Eyes. To clear your name, you have to give a final farewell performance. Oh, very well. I suppose I owe it to my public. Uh, yeah. So, here's what I want you to do. I like it. I like it! <laughs> what? Katrina Stoneheart buys world's largest ruby? I don't believe it. My old friend Katrina. <laughs> this should be like taking candy from a baby. <laughs> oh, bright eyes, I've just found your next starring role. In fact, we'll start filming tonight. I wouldn't miss it for the world. In this scene, Bright Eyes, your loving master has been locked out of the house, so you sneak inside through the kitty door and unlock the window and let him in. Got it? Oh, good. Then roll cameras. Ready? And action! And cut! <laughs> that was perfect! going on here? Allow me to explain. In this scene, Sammy, uh, quick fingers Quentin, tries to steal a ruby. The only problem is, there is no ruby. It's all a big joke. Ha! What? That's right, Sammy. You've been tricked by some of your old friends. All the dogs you've led astray, all the dogs you've forced into doing your dirty work. And now these dogs are throwing you a big surprise bash. Ready, Sammy? Then roll camera and action! Katrina, but I've got to fly. So long, you mangy mice. Oh, I give up. You got me. It's a wrap. Sammy, quick fingers, Quentin. They're under arrest for the robbery of the Main Street Jewelry Store. Say, Mummy Dearest, isn't that Sammy Quentin the guy you sent to rob the money from the pound puppet? Um, yes, uh, uh, what Bratina meant, dear, is that, um, yeah. Oh, don't worry, Aunt Katrina. I wouldn't dare tell the police about your dealings with a wanted criminal. My lips are sealed. Huh? Oh, yes, yes, how nice, Holly. That's a good girl. And thanks to the reward money we're getting for the capture of Quick Fingers Quitten, we'll be able to pay that electric bill. The puppy pound can stay open. Great news. Hi, Auntie Katrina. Just ducky. Well, Bright Eyes, welcome back. And until something better comes along, honey lamb, welcome home. Thank you all so much. I guess I never realized till now how much you guys really mean to me. You're the greatest. Wonder Whopper couldn't agree more. And we're all pretty crazy about you too, Bright Eyes. So remember, a one, a two, stay hip, Bright Eyes. Yeah. Don't flip, Bright Eyes. Yeah. Stay hip with all of us guys. It's great to have you home. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's the Pound Puppy Pet Care Corner. Howdy, sports fans. Cooler here with a couple of words about staying in shape, puppy style. You know, us pups aren't thrilled about being cooped up all day. Please play with me. Oh. Give your dog a break. Have some fun with him at least once a day. Here, Howler, let's play fetch. Oh, 
boy. Make sure your dog gets regular exercise. He'll be healthier and live longer, too. Black Steel Robo Force! Hunter the Conqueror is about to attack Max Steel the leader. Wrecker the Demolisher to the rescue. Ideal's new Robo Force. Warrior robots with gripper bases and crusher arms, each sold separately. Hundreds escaping! Okay in there? Okay, Dad! But we won't be safe till we're rid of Hundred. Hundred the Conqueror, Max Steel the Leader, Wrecker the Demolisher, each sold separately. New from Ideal's Robo Force. Long ago at Rose Petal Place, Orchid met Mastina, the evil spider. Doll sold separately. Oh no, Orchid, it's Nastina! Wait till I tiptoe through your tulips, Rose Petal. Watch out, Nastina, the sky is falling. I won't fall for that. Gotcha! That'll keep her in her place. <laughs> Rose Petal, Nestina, and Orchid dolls come with all you see here, each sold separately. New from Canada. Oh, hope you liked Pound Puppies. It's 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 definitely better than Foofer. <laughs> um, Pound Puppies, just like I said, just an odd odd toy line to bring, or odd toy line to bring to cartoon. Because you know, at least they looked. Like, you know, in the face. They look like the toy. So, all right. With that, uh, I'm going to bid you a good Saturday afternoon. Sunday, whenever you're watching this, actually. Because um, some of you, like, out way out west, you're watching this. And uh, it's still morning when this ends. Uh, usually by the time this ends here, it is afternoons. It is, it is afternoon. I, I've timed this almost perfectly, so it runs from 8 to noon. Um, and like today, it might not. It might go a little over because of the uh, I added some extra stuff there at the end. So, hey, as always, just because you grow older doesn't mean you need to grow up. There's always time for cartoons. Uh, and remember, take care of yourselves. Take care of your friends and family. Um, and have fun. Just enjoy your life. So, I will see you next time for Sora Saturday Morning Serials. I'll see you every Friday for Sci Fridays. And I'll see you every Monday for more Group Therapy TV podcast. And with that, I am out of here. And I will see you next Saturday. Have a good one.